Hey, do you know what would be really annoying? What? If I ate a biscuit close to the mic during the opening theme song. Do it. Ah! Oh, chew it. Wetter! Wetter is better! Succulent and delicious! Mm. Oh! Oh! Mm. Mm. Oh! Well, goodbye, oh. goodbye people who are usually put off by things, and hello, whoever stuck around. Welcome <laughs> to another <laughs> fine asterisk edition <laughs> of the Big Damn Cast. Uh, my name is um, Elias Cortez. My name is Mouth Sounds McGee. <laughs> <laughs> That's your ASMR porn name. Yeah. ASMR is not porn. We must make that clear. It's or it's oral porn. No. Or, or AU oral, no, it, not it's, O oral. It's relaxation uh, audio. It's just, you know, a lot of people tend to get off on it. So. It's fucking for your ears. <laughs> and any and any and any any attempt to convince me otherwise is futile. <laughs> I won't hear of it. I'll put two cocks in my ears. <laughs> Oh, anyway, God. Speaking of um, sticking things in places that you really don't want them to be, but they're just forced upon you, this week we're talking about <laughs> Cloverfield Paradox. Um, don't assume from that cheeky little attempt at innuendo uh, what my reaction is. I think you might be surprised. It was a cheeky little attempt at innuendo, Spoiler wasn't it? Spoiler alert, we, we kind of liked it. But it has problems, we'll talk about it. Um, also, kicking his re off. Uh, Super Bowl trailers go ah, the big game Inc- the Super Bowl the thing <laughs> um, and uh, yeah and also uh, maybe some maybe some emails at the end maybe ads know? I'll think about it yeah maybe I'll I don't know I've never even looked at this week's email I'll think about it in a way but first Matthew the man of many meats the man who brings the meats inside a lovely cardboard sheath. What? I got a finger he in my He rolls mouth. them out, sticks them on the table. <laughs> we get some salts. We get a roller. We sell it before we make them nice and tender. Like we beat the meat. I'm going to beat your meats. Mm. And 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 as I, I wish I do you so, would. As I do so. <laughs> tell me, sir. Tell me, Don Miguel. Tell me of El Diablo. Sweet, uh, sweet, sweet, sweet Diablo. Um. Well. Let's talk about Jurassic World first. Eh? <laughs> Does this look like a film? Uh, yes. Does it look like a film that might be entertaining, exciting, interesting? Any of the above? Uh, yes, not all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> and not constantly, right? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, in pockets. I, I. It's difficult for me to say um, if I'm looking forward to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom or not, because I just don't really care. I find it I looks f- like dinosaur. <laughs> gen- I can't believe I'm saying this sentence. Oh, God, here we go. I know exactly where this is going. It looks like generic dinosaur action. Oh, what? <laughs> what have we become? <laughs> What what society have we created when I can turn around and say, I'm not interested in this movie because it looks like generic dinosaur action. You need to That's... you need to go back in time, sit down with your three or four year old self who's who's there with little triceratops toys oh, and, and like megazords and shit like that. You need to sit down with them and go, Do you know what? One day you're gonna think this is not the most exciting thing in the world. Listen, I watched Jurassic Park again recently and as Fuck you should me, do. that movie holds up. It's amazing. Like, it's really good. Like, there's a reason it's hailed as a classic. Because it's a goddamn classic. It I is... have had no desire to revisit Jurassic World since it was released. Do you know what I think it is? What the difference is in terms of... I mean, we're presuming that Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is going to be terrible. Uh, presume away! But do you know what I think the difference is between Jurassic, the Jurassic World era and the first and bits of the second Jurassic Park? Um... Heart. There's a heart in Jurassic Park. Yeah. There, there's there's a warmth in there. Um, it, it's a cold, grey uh, surface that's that, that, that the Jurassic World rests upon in and, comparison. Yeah. And some would say, well, that's kind of the point. You know, they're supposed to show that the consumerism's kind of killed the wonderment and all this. Other. It's like, yeah, but we still have to watch it. Yeah. 
still have to watch the damn thing. They are supposed to show that consumerism has killed the Wonderman. They're not supposed to show that by killing the Wonderman with consumerism. Look at this grey car park. Like, look at this grey uh, multi-storey car park. Isn't it exciting? Yeah, it's functional and, and, and you know useful in places and it gets the job done. But look at that one over there that's got a big freaking graffiti mural on the side. <laughs> yeah. That looks amazing yeah. and has bad time and effort and love poured into it. And it just happens to be of a dinosaur. I would rather park my car over there. What a colourful and interesting place that is. It... I don't drive. So, uh, <laughs> I'll buy a car and park it. I would like to buy... I'd like to buy... I would like to park someone's car <laughs> over there. <laughs> I'm going I'm to... I've got to steal one first. But I'd like to park oh. somebody's car over there. That's why I always pad my elbow underneath jackets. As well, you should. Yeah. Uh, um, oh. It's better to get the Jimmy the Window open, isn't it? Oh. To Jimmy the Window open. Oh, Jimmy Greaves. We've got another um, genetically engineered dinosaur. And I know yeah. they're all genetically engineered, technically, but I mean, we've got another one that's been purpose built. More dinosaur than dinosaur. It's a bit smaller than the T-Rex. It... So it looks like if the Irex and the Spinosaurus had had a baby, but it's got raptor feet. Has it kind of got claws that are kind of like hands? Yeah, and its arms in one it's shot got... are long enough to reach near its face, but in other shots are clearly not long enough to reach near its face. Okay, so it's got extendable arms. <laughs> it's got go-go. Just go, go all out and give it, like, tentacles and wings. It's Do you got know what I mean? go-go gadget arms. <laughs> It, this it is, is actually this is actually where the Jurassic Park franchise um, crosses over into the Transformers franchise. I thought you were saying Inspector Gadget. They're franchise actually Dinobots. Is it a prequel to Beast Wars? Yeah, no, uh, yes. <laughs> well, technically, it's a sequel to Beast Wars. Yeah, because it's, Beast Wars takes place in prehistoric Earth. Yeah, because there was so much to do back then, <laughs> but conveniently, so little to render. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. I I I reckon that. Where's this, where's this fight going to happen? Well, where's, where's this fight going to happen, Optimus? Uh, oh, oh it, another it, desert in a desert. Hey. Oh, where's your where's your lair? Where's your lair, Scorpion? Oh, it's it's, it's in a cave again. It's a cave. That's nice. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, well, they did animate Megatron's rubber du- rubber ducky in his energon bath. So there is that. Did. Oh <laughs> did my have... God, I remember. Um, yes. Beast um, Wars was, was the tits. Um, anyway, <laughs> as was Jurassic Park, but um, I just. I feel the same way. I feel the same way about this going into this as I did about coming out of Jurassic World, which is yeah, it's probably going to be a couple bits I like, but ultimately this feels pointless. It yeah. feels like it's parading around in a Jurassic Park fancy dress outfit that yeah. a Halloween do. I'm finding it very hard to get excited about it, Ooh. which is yeah. you know, which is disappointing because dinosaurs are awesome. Genetically engineered dinosaurs are theoretically awesome. Calling it. I like Chris Pratt and I like Bryce mm. Dallas Howard. Just not in this. Just not in this. I'm calling it. The final act is the volcano erupting and that shot of them all running away and going to the shoreline and everything, including the gyrosphere dropping into the water. Because in the previous trailer, we saw what is clearly now on reflection. Um, oh, sorry, bloody film drinking. It's a dinosaur! We ah. saw what is clearly now on reflection, the the big, bad, evil dinosaur yeah. being smacked down and killed by the T-Rex in yeah. the last trailer. Yeah. So that's the end. Like, that, the T-Rex arriving is like the finale. and It's like a whole, oh, yeah, the T-Rex is here now, finally. And Again. So? Uh, I mean, we don't know that for sure, but... The T-Rex itself shouldn't be a finale. The T-Rex wasn't the finale of Jurassic Park. No. The finale of Jurassic Park the finale was, a, was a tense stakeout while they're trying to the, while they're the trying T-Rex. to get the systems back online yeah. and get help and wait for oh, the thingy man. as the raptors like try to pick them off. And when I went again recently, I, I'd forgotten about like the raptors chasing them through the vents like yeah. in the ceiling. I was like, actually, this is really cool. But yeah, no, those. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 just finding it difficult to get excited about Jurassic World. Fallen Kingdom, probably because I'm so excited about Infinity War. Yeah, we had another little sneaky look at, and I know, I know, I know we were kind of, we kind of real, didn't really want to see much Infinity War stuff at the Super Bowl because it's Black Panther's turn to shine. But the reviews have been coming out for that, and they are overwhelmingly positive. Mm. Um, oh God, yeah. So I guess that's already got its, you know. Well, its isn't it the um, isn't it the biggest pre-sale for a superhero movie in like the last few years? Possibly. And, and which it, is which is so weird because it's like yeah. pre sales, but people do. But it oh, means yeah, that pe- it means that people are going. I am making sure that on that night after work, 
I am going to see, see this movie. Black I have Panther. my tickets. IMAX like pre sales are a thing, especially over here. But I think I'm off that day, so I think I'm going to go see Black Panther. Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Tuesday. We get it Tuesday, February yeah. 13th. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Step into the spotlight. Oh, it looks so good. I've also never known a superhero movie since maybe freaking, oh, I don't know, Batman in 1989. Be like, oh, by the way, everybody, release date of the album. And mm. people be like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> the cover's fucking elegant. As, black as, like, it's just, the album. Just the black cover with the necklace. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, yeah. it's great. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stylish as fuck, mate. So, so I'm really jazzed about... Um, Black Panther. So we didn't get too much Infinity War. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was a 29 little 29 second yeah. teaser. We got a little tease with a little bit of new footage and just some, you know, good shots of things happening. Well, we'd already seen footage of Banner and Tony and Wong and Stephen Strange together in the Sanctum Santorum's lobby. Mm-hmm. This one has a very brief... It has a shot of, of uh, Tony and Spider-Man and Doctor Strange to next to each other. But the yeah. best shot in this teaser for my money was... Just that very brief shot of Doctor Strange, like, obviously whipping up some kind of attack, and Iron Man just flies past yeah. on the offensive. And you're like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My inner 10 year old just realised that's Doctor Strange and Iron Man in the same shot in a movie. Yeah. This is. A movie that people are excited for, featuring this... Iron Man and Doctor Strange. This is. What world is this? Oh, by the way, you're going to think dinosaur movies is a generic and boring kid later, but right now, yeah. I want to let you know that this is have, a thing that will happen We exist in a world when I can use the sentence, <laughs> more generic dinosaur action, and also uh, <laughs> getting a movie with Doctor Strange and Iron Man in it that I'm genuinely excited about. Also, two movie Sherlock's in the same shot. Two, yeah. Hmm. Sher- Sherlock, Sherlock... Well, not movie Sherlock's. 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 The two 21st century adaptation, popular adaptations of Sherlock Holmes. We're getting Sherlock's of Sherlock's. Te- terrible. I like it. Do it again. Is it better than <laughs> BBC's Sherlock? Everything is. Ha <laughs> um, ha! Apart, apart from series one, episode three, and series two, episode three, which I will argue are pretty damn good bits of television. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so yeah, Infinity War's happening, and we're all excited about it, and there was a trailer. What, what do you want me to say? What do you, what would you want me to, do you want me to break it down scene by scene? Do you want me to draw red circles and arrows all over it and say, yes, because that gets the clicks, that you missed. Sam. Well, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I will say, I like how this teaser trailer called back to the Avengers on purpose with the final shot of it. You get the last like title card oh, yeah. and then it just cuts to Thanos like smirking, framed oh, yeah. in a very similar way to the first time we saw him on film. Which, have you ever seen those two side to side, by the way? How Thanos looks. They look quite- and how he looks in that post credit sting. I imagine they change quite a bit. Yeah. The post credit sting one looks more like the comic book version. Yeah. Well, it's a completely different dude under the... Ma- and it's makeup. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, that you know. was like makeup with a bit of CGI enhancement on it for the eyes and, and I stuff. I think it might have all been makeup, you know. Freaky, man. Freaky, whereas whereas freaky this is all performance capture Josh Brolin. But we'll get to Josh Brolin. Oh, yeah, we will. In a minute. Oh, yeah, we freaking But will. first... But, but first... Because we've said all we can we're say We're going but first... Work. We finally saw some footage, some proof that Solo <laughs> exists. We saw proof of life for Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, I don't. You're it's about. alive. We had the it's, title. It's coming. We had the title image uh, drop from Ron Howard a while ago. That was proof enough, right? That it existed as a film. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this, like you say, this is it. And not only that, on the same day we get like four teaser posters dropped as well. So it's like character posters. It's no less. happening. It's freaking happening. So that makes me happy. Um, and it also spawned a bunch of parodies, like almost immediately. Which oh yeah, is great, like Binks, and yeah, <laughs> Ewoks. And I think like that. my my favorite <laughs> take on it was um, Chips Darsky on Twitter tweeted. Um, I'm glad that the new Han Solo movie will, will reveal the origins of his catchphrase. I used to look like a different person when I was slightly younger. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, like, I mean, Let's, yeah, that's I mean, what's that? Old, old and Aaron Reich is the meat and potatoes of what I'd like to talk about. So let's talk about everything else first. Yeah. Um... Chewie looks adorable. Chewie looks like Chewie. Yeah, but he also sort of does look... They sort of tried to make him a little less bulky. And he's got, like, two belts. He's sort of... 
It almost looks like he's wearing two a, belts. I mean, it almost looks like he's did, wearing. Did Tetsuya Nomura design this costume? No, no. Tommy Wiseau told him. Oh, made all right, look okay. You see, I, I my th- ass look good. Make my ass look good. <laughs> I've I got think, him peeking everywhere. I think take I think, that level down. <laughs> oh, baby, take it down. I th- I th- I, th- I think they've done that. But it sort of looks like he's not quite settled into his uh, what he's carrying. It's just little aesthetic things like that. He's not settled into his fur. Yeah, he's not because normally what was his traditional look is he's got his big old like armor belt and a bag sometimes. Yeah, and here he's sort of like carrying everything around. Sometimes he's got a broken droid on his back. <laughs> oh God! And he's always got a big fucking gun. His bowcaster. Some motherfucker is always trying to escape up a hill with a big droid on your back. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, Woody Harrelson looks pretty freaky cool. Woody Harrelson just looks like Woody Harrelson, so, you know. But with a weird freaky haircut. Job done. I think this is boomting. Um, <laughs> Amelia Clark. Uh, b- looks b- 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 like Amelia Clark. And is once again a five foot one petite British lady in a lead role in a Star Wars film, but from this era. Uh, a bit weird. A little bit weird. Uh, like, are we going to hear any different. Are, are we going to hear a different accent? Is it weird, though? Only slightly, because. Lead, who, lead female character of the new trilogy is Rey. Yeah. Lead character of Rogue One was Jyn Erso. Yeah. Lead female character of Solo is, uh, what's her name, Kira. Uh, uh, she, 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 she I have no idea how the <laughs> fuck it's pronounced, but it's spelled Q-I apostrophe R-A. I'm assuming that's Kira? Yeah. Um, now her hair's purple. I'm not, it's not, it's not the brunette thing I'm picking up on, but it is a slightly Ooh, odd. Triggered. That, no, no, but it is slightly odd that in terms of, in terms of, of, of description and, and type, uh. the three female leads have been exactly the same. Uh. But, but m- the reason why it's jarringly weird to me is because they all have the exact same RP like voice. Where's the bold choice here? Can we not have a, can we not have a female lead character in a Star Wars movie who's like, you're all right, mate. Hello. <laughs> Just it's like a really, really thick accented brum. Oh, how about? Do you know what I mean? How about uh, how about a, a, a female person of colour lead? That'd be nice. That'd yeah. make a fucking change. Or as as um, another one of my friends uh, <laughs> tweeted, um, because we also got the news that David Benioff and, and DB Vice are going to do their another Star Wars trilogy. Oh, is that confirmed? So Ryan Johnson's got his Star Wars trilogy coming on, and then Benny and Weiss are doing. I one. don't want this. And, and then, I just want one film like every two years. Well, she tweeted. List of people who get to do Star Wars trilogies. Uh, Ryan Johnson. D- David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. CGI Peter Cushing. <laughs> a woman or a person of colour. Oh, like, God. And it is that thing of like... And I think we've talked about this before. It's like, mm. why... I don't know if, it, if it's Kathleen Kennedy's feet we need to lay this at, but... It does seem odd. It's time. Yeah. It's time to let a woman take a crack, or a person of colour take a crack at... Or oh, both. Well, I, th- I think take I, a crack at yeah, Star Wars. Well, they could projects. say, well, you know, we just don't have any sort of uh, on our radar who are seasoned in this thing. Okay, look, cool. That, forget for a second that you could, you know, create like the same with leads in films, like leads yeah. of different different ethnicities. You can create your new stars. You can create your thingies by bringing in people who you see the raw talent of, and you're like, right, come inside. Mm-hmm. Forget that for a second. You with your Marvel movies, Disney, and your two spin-off Star Wars movies. Uh, for the most part, anyway, uh, have been giving the director's chair over to smaller or lesser known directing teams or directors. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, look at look at the Star Wars films that were in development yeah. a little while ago. Colin Trevorrow was doing episode nine. Colin Trevorrow had not done many movies. He'd done two. Was it Batteries... Uh, no, no batteries he's not included. He does. That's a completely different movie from back when he was about um, ten. Safety not guaranteed. Safety not guaranteed. And Jurassic Jurassic World. World. I think he. I think he might have made the Book of Henry at that point. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, um, yeah, it's funny how hmm. after the Book of Henry, <laughs> Josh Trank was reportedly doing a Boba Fett movie, which then Fantastic know. Four drama and shit happened, then and he, he was not. Tranked. Hey. Hey. I Tranked his career. <laughs> oh, oh, no, but seriously, like burn. hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage to a house that he was renting. Yeah. yeah. Um, what a and prick. years. And, uh, uh, but, but what a fascinating movie that's going to make in about 20 years' time. Yeah. When someone tells the making of the Fantastic Four. Um, the, the, fall, the, the fall of Trank and Landis. Oh, fuck it. Ooh. No, no, just focus on Trank. The Landis film could feel seedy and gross. Is it Trandis or Lank? Don't ship them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a power couple. Um, I like Lank. But yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> it's a good portmanteau. 
But like, this is a perfect excuse to be like, all right, let's let's do that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, especially if you want to tell stories in this universe that are of a different kind. This is the weirdest thing that struck me about the solo trailer, aside from old Naren Reich, we're getting there, don't worry, gentle listener, is that um, they said that these smaller films would feel different from the main episodes because they're going to try different genres and different tones, because they can do. Which this looks like it might well be doing. Yeah, but it also does feel a little bit like Rogue One again. And I think that's more the visuals. Well, I, like, think it's, I think it's the same tone. like beige yeah. and sandstone like colour to it and... And, you know, the fact that, again, it is just like, I'm a character. This trailer's stating who the character is. And we're putting together a team. And it's like, didn't that happen in the last movie? That is, that, exactly... That's the last movie. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, it looks like it's kind of a heist movie. I think the, the teaser for the teaser trailer actually showed a bit more of interest. Like, it showed whether it's part of the heist or pre-Solo um, not being a, a complete dickhead. Mm. Um, the teaser for the teaser trailer was him interviewing to be an Imperial... Um, stormtrooper or, or officer. I think he's. I think he. It could be part of the heist. I think they're impre- embracing the legend's backstory of him being at least a at least training to be an imperial pilot. Which is going to be point. which, based on how they tell, is going to make it harder to like him in this movie. We obviously like him as we know him from before, and that's never going to change. That's never going to be touched. Yeah, but we like him because he's a scoundrel. Yeah, but. There's a difference between being a scoundrel <laughs> and enlisting with the Nazis. Yeah, but <laughs> like it's it, what I'm saying is in this movie, yeah. if that's the approach, you're going to have to have a fucking solid script of performance to convince us all that he's not a cunt. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like maybe. it's it's. Um, um, I don't know. I don't, but... it's, it's so <laughs> difficult to judge because we see. I know, although we have seen the trailer and we've got a sort of sense of how it's going to look, we mm-hmm. it's just so difficult to get a sense of the of the characters. Like, yeah, from this, from what little we can see. Aside from how freaking stylish Lando's looking. Oh my god. That's coming across. Now, childish Gambino me all day, baby. Like, Donald Glover is going to be great, no matter what. Oh, like, yeah. if, even if the script doesn't serve him right, he's going to bring something to it. Because he's, he's, he's a Donald very talented guy. fucking Glover. But also, like, the, I mean, the character poster looks fly oh as fuck, god. and you're like, yes, that's Lando. That's Lando Calrissian. He doesn't even say a word in these trailers, but you know, you, he you just look at him looks you, like Lando. He emanates the characters. It's it's when like, he, he, does okay. the, he does the salute to the droid, and the droid does it back. And it's yeah. just—he's so cool. <laughs> like, so he's—he's he's going to be a supporting player, and he's going to absolutely own it. You're already getting that vibe. There is one person who we're really not getting a vibe from that much. Now, it's a teaser. He says about three things. We can't really tell what the whole performance is going to be like. But that being said, you're doing a prequel where a different actor is playing one of the most iconic roles in sci-fi film history. Yeah. You need to make sure your first trailer, teaser or otherwise, is the one that makes everyone in the general public who loves Star Wars go, okay, that's Han. Like, that's Han Solo. I believe it. That's Han Solo. I can't wait to see what else he does with it. You know, you need to have that flavour of, okay, fears are soured. Yeah. I do not think this trailer does that. Nope. I think, if anything, it actually adds possible credence. Credence probably the wrong word. Adds a bit of weight to the rumours that Aaron Reich needed supervision. I don't know, but like I was saying last week, like actors no, calling I, yeah. in acting coaches to mm. sets is not uncommon, and it's not a, and it's not yeah, a, that's true. <clears throat> a, 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 an admission of. No, 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 I'm terrible. No, I've, I saw um, him in Hell Seas when he was freaking great. Yeah. But, um, but I, what I mean is you can tell that something was... And I think... My, my, my theory, ahem, my theory, by M. Ilk, my theory, ahem, is the Brontosaurus. It, Monty Python kids, go check it out. Um, my theory is <laughs> that the acting coach was there to try and coax some Harrison Ford out of the performance. <laughs> and it's been an unsuccessful as a, attempt. As opposed to the uh, the life coach they usually try and get to coax Harrison Ford out of his smoky trailer. <laughs> oh, God! It's like, are you finally happy they killed you off in Star Wars? Uh, yeah, because now I've got more money and time to buy and smoke weed. Uh, I didn't really uh, spend a lot of time with the other actors. Uh, not in filming. I uh, yeah, getting blazed in, in my trailer. Hey, uh, Harrison. Yeah. Are you are you working a full shift today or just part time? Uh, working part time. Part time. 
working hard or I'm hardly working. Um, um. <laughs> oh, Chewie's in there too. Um, it'll never come out of his fur. Um, so, no, but like I, I saw in the comment section of a video. Um, talking about the trailer. So Don't read the comments! You know, someone said, like, uh, the, the person in the video said that they, they kind of got a sense of Han Solo from from a couple of lines in the trailer. They were like, yeah, I can kind of see it. And someone in the comments said, oh my god, yes, I'm so sick of people recommending an impressionist like doing the part. And naturally they were kind of trying to make a sideways dig at the actor Anthony Ingraber. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is, A, unfair, because yeah. Harrison Ford is pretty fucking spot on, but B, I think if Anthony Ingraber was cast as a young Han Solo, he wouldn't be attempting an impression of Han Solo. Yeah, because make no mistake, there absolutely is a difference mm. between impressions and, and playing, acting. Yeah, like, a it's younger not version the same of, thing. Of, a, of a character who, whilst keeping in mind, yeah. their doing their an impression and, yeah. of someone does, is would not let you play them in a biopic. Like mm. it's, it, it's, it's almost mimicry. Yeah. That rather, more than it is a, a performance. So if you were approaching playing the role of younger Han Solo, what you should do... Is run away! It, yeah. <laughs> no, well, Leave I mean, the project! But it, Don't it, do it! <laughs> but if the ink's dry, what you should do is you should... Tear up the contracts! You should watch... Don't let it happen! You should watch the original trilogy quite a bit. You should try and... You should figure out... An impression to yourself, this isn't for the performance, but just to yourself, of his mannerisms, of his little quirks, his idiosyncrasies. You should also try and do the voice. Then when it comes to playing the part, you don't just translate that directly, but it's all in the back of your mind. If you want to get a sense of, yeah. of, of the character of Han and, and what Harrison Ford imbued with him, then you really need to walk a mile in Harrison's shoes. And he's so stoned that he won't notice that you're a mile away <laughs> and you've got his shoes. <laughs> so, no, 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 it's no, a no. win-win situation. No, 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 no. And you he has really expensive shoes. You don't walk a mile in Harrison Ford's shoes. You sit five minutes in the cockpit <laughs> of his plane and if you crash it, You've done well. <laughs> um, uh, keep it in the air next time. <laughs> Part time. Um, I can do it. Oh God. Um, but do you know what I mean? Like you, you need to have it in the back of your mind. Like it needs to be there. If you watch, um, like for example, the BBC Four did a season over over a few years of these brilliant made for TV movies about comedy writers and comedy personalities. Mm. Uh, there was Eric and Ernie, there was, which was about Marco and Wise, there was um, Best in the, uh, best Possible Taste, which was about Kenny Everett. Mm. The one that kicked it all off, I can't remember the name, but it, it was about Kenneth Williams. It was the one that Michael Sheen was in. Oh, like, yeah. There was, I can't remember what there was, was a Tommy either. Cooper one. And the idea being these were <clears throat> dramatizations of the life of these people. Obviously told through a bit of that, you know, sort of based on a true story prism. But the performers who played those roles, especially, absolutely, especially the guys in Eric and Ernie, like, you believe 100% that they are playing younger versions of Morecambe and Wise. But they're not doing impressions. No. They are definitely bringing an impression to the mm. table, but they're not just doing an impression. I, I'm going to say it now. My... <laughs> I think the most impressive example of actors playing younger versions of very distinct characters and selling it perfectly, unfortunately, is in one of the worst comedies of the early 21st century. Which is? It's the two fellas who played Harry and Lloyd oh, in Dumb and Dumber. fuck me sideways. I've not even seen that movie. All you have to do is watch the trailer and you'd be like, fucking hell, that's... That's not a Jim Carrey and a Jeff Daniels impression that they're doing. They're younger versions of those is that, characters. Is that Dumb and Dumber 2? No, Dumb no, no. Dumber -er? Dumb and Dumber -er when oh. Harry met Lloyd. God. It's a terrible piece of shit. Oh. But these guys are terrifyingly believable as younger versions of those characters. These guys, man. Oh, God. They're a riot. That's a poster. It's, you, it's them in a furry dog van. You sat in the middle pointing at them going, These guys! These guys! Um, oh, God. But you don't, Wait till you see these guys. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, home, holy shit, you, you, you've done it. Like, you've absolutely done it. I believe these are the same characters, but younger. Um, it doesn't look like Alden Ehrenreich is doing that. It looks like he's sort of just, like... 
I, I, how, I maintain, how an, though, that it's, how just, an actor, it's, it's almost impossible to tell from the little we've seen. That's true. That's, that's my main... That's true. That's but, why I'm not too quick to but do I, but a hot take. Oh, God. Well, the reason the reason why it's offset me is there's the moment in the trailer where uh, he sort of confronts... Um, Get up! Uh, and he, he sort of gives this, like, kind of... I think she says something like, no one knows who you really are, and he sort of gives her a smirk or something, and this is sort of like, who's that? And it just doesn't feel like Han Solo. I don't know, I kind of, that's kind of a Han thing. Yeah, I don't well, know the way he is, does it, but I this don't is know. this is for Han when he's younger. So we might may, we might see him grow into the Han we know. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But but I also I also fear that they're going to be like this is only set like a year before a new home. It's clearly like, oh, not. God. Like Jesus, this has to be set it like ten years before. At ten least, years at least, at least. Because that means by the time we see Lando again, yeah, in Empire. It's been like 12, 13 years. It can't be That's more... a believable amount of time for Han to have had the Falcon taken off him and be pissed off about it. It can't be more than 20 years, because that's when Revenge of the Sith takes place. And mm. it can't be less than five years, mm. because... I mean, it could be, but it's, it's unlikely that it'll be less than five years, because Lando turns up in Rebels, right. and he doesn't have the Falcon. Uh, okay, then again, I can imagine I can imagine a movie at some point having to break the continuity and then loosely explain it. I know, yeah. they've, got, I know they've got a guy well, who's like got, in they've charge. Got, of, they've got a group. They've got yeah. the story group, which are in charge of keeping everything. But I wouldn't be surprised if they then had you know, to write like them. a sideline <laughs> in like a rebels, you know, DK published guidebook or something where they mention that Lando just happened to not have the Falcon at that moment in time because he'd lost it to someone else. I mean, it, someone, I mean? It, like, it, you know, even though they've made a fresh start, the EU is still the EU. Yeah. So someone will write a fucking book about it. <laughs> oh God. Someone will write a book about it. As it stands, are you still? Are you still? I don't think we're excited, really. Anyway, are you, are you excited or are you? Has, I, I'll be honest. I'm like, I'm eh. curious. If nothing else, I'm curious mm. and. Less synth versions of the Star Wars music. Oh please. yeah, the act, most of the music in that trailer is really cool. And then they, when the title card comes up, they do the they do the weird callback to the Star Wars theme, and it's just mm. a bit. Ugh, yeah, ugh, my ears just shut themselves. <laughs> um, but everything up to that point is great. <laughs> my ears just shut themselves. It's so like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think the more, oh. in a way, I think the more this movie is just allowed to be its own thing and not be like. This is the hand you know, and this is going to be the hand you know, and this is foreshadowing what it'll do later. The less it leans into that, I think the more it'll be. The less it leans into linking into <clears throat> hand in the original trilogy, the more enjoyable it has a chance of being. I mean, it, it's we know it's a film now. It's got a trailer. It's got a release date. It's coming out. It's happening. But happening. I'm not sure it ever should have happened. But yeah. I, you know, we'll see in May. I'm. I'm I'm trepid I have trepidations. Aside from episode nine, this is the last scheduled public knowledge Star Wars movie now. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, because the way they operate, Disney operate with Marvel, and the way Kathleen Kennedy kicked off this era, you think we'd be aware of what the next one is by now at least. I think that Josh Trank threw a spanner in the works mm. when he tranked. Or, I mean, it could also be to do with this. They've had to put all hands on deck. All hands on deck to get, hey, this, hey. To get this one sorted. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Every egg a bird. Oh, uh, speaking of... All hands speaking on of, deck. Speaking of birds... What? This segue doesn't work. Deadpool 2! <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that trailer dropped, like, what, an, less than an hour before we start, were due to start recording? God bless it. Oh, bless man. its eyes. It's called... Um, Deadpool Meet Cable. Yeah. Which is another name for my dick. We only see one shot of them together in the whole trailer as well. It's at the end. They're in the same room <laughs> from the same scene, which is quite quite nice that they're still... Subtly, they're saving that for the movie. They don't want us to see these two interact until we've paid for our freaking ticket. Oh, no. Which I'm kind of fine or, with. Or, or, or unless they're action figures. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, you watch the custom accounts now, just immediately start making them. Oh, man. Woody variant Deadpool. Etsy, Etsy, Etsy. <laughs> Get on that shit. You're going to eBay a bunch of Marvel Legends Deadpools at top-notch premium prices. Going to get some milliput. Going to get some fabric. Do a bit of custom sculpting. A little bit of stitching. Boom! Woody! Deadpool! 
on Etsy, three hundred pounds, fifty pounds posted and packaging. Only three B oh, made, yeah. so hurry up and buy them. Yes, um, <laughs> limited run of one. <laughs> oh, Jesus, um, all bid now. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> fucking hell. This trailer assumes that everybody knows who Cable is, but if you don't. It doesn't matter. You're still going to think yeah. this is a fucking cool trailer. Like, the attitude of the trailer is like, you want to know who this guy is. You want But it's to also know. kind of taking the piss out of him a bit. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Absolutely. And it's taking the piss out of itself a lot. I can't wait to see how much the 90s get rubbed on. Oh, this movie. God. Be sure. Well, I mean, Deadpool is a product of the 90s as well, so... Hmm. But, but he's sort of... He's sort of you know, aged aged quite well. He's with the grown times. well. He's grown beyond that original. Whereas, K- arguably, Cable hasn't really. Yeah. Um, um, which is kind of cool. I mean, in terms of his design here, he definitely doesn't look like some kind of weird reject. Like they've they've made it work. He's a lot more military in his design. Yeah, yeah. Less of the X Men blues and yellows. That does not mean that isn't in there. And like the gu- Negasonic the Teenage Warhead is wearing basically a fucking uniform, an X Men uniform now, straight up. The like, guns are big, but yeah. they're not. Stupid big. Yeah, they're still big, they're still big sci-fi they're, guns. They are large sci-fi guns, <laughs> but they're not unreasonably big sci-fi guns that don't actually look like guns because Rob Liefeld can't draw guns or feet. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. No point will we see Cable's feet in shot. <laughs> <laughs> we do, though. Yeah, we do. We see him leaping onto a freaking truck. Yeah, why not? As his big gun. There's a massive freaking gun in his poncho. Because uh, ponchos were a ting. Uh, Poncho was more of a more of a bishop thing, wasn't it, from that timeline? Um, They're from the same timeline, right? Bishop and no, the... no. Ma- time travel in Marvel. Were... <laughs> oh god. Here well, we go. specifically Here in we X Men as well. Put your hat on. Yeah. Put your hat on. We're going into deep dive comics corner. Um, time travel, <laughs> which is actually also your party trick. Yes. Uh, you should see the mess it makes. Um, <laughs> so comics time... are. <laughs> Weird. Thanks, Bob. Um, so, time travel in Marvel works kind of like it. It's, it leans into the into the multiverse as well. Yeah. So, alternate pasts and futures in Marvel are actually distinct alternate universes. So, Bishop and Cable both come from the future, but they come from different futures. Yeah. And they travel back and forth, and the futures change. Yeah, depending on what's happening in their present. But they still exist because. But those they have those to exist futures, to have travelled and yeah, interacted with those the futures still exist yeah. as alternate universes. Yeah, and they still remember them as their home times. Yeah. But yeah, it's... yeah. The idea is like it's like if Kyle Reese had come back in the Terminator and not only protected Sarah Connor but somehow shut down Skynet then and there. Yeah, he would still exist. And would remember his future, but is like it's never going to happen now. Mm. So it's like the fuck is this time travel in <clears throat> time travel in the Marvel universe? Usually, mm. not always, depending on the story and the writer. Obviously, um, usually doesn't operate on strict cause and effect. Mm. It's more of a ripple effect. It's, it's, and it's more of creates a creates alternate universes rather than changing the original mm. home present. Yeah, people assume that time is like linear progression of course effect, but actually, actually. from a non-subjective uh, viewpoint, it's more a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey Shoot. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a big ball of shite. But it looks like we see a bit of the future. We see where he comes from. Yeah. Um, we do we know where he's going though. Uh, we know where he's he's come from. Cable Eye Joe. Cable Eye Joe! Um, Blind Al. The meat cable. All, all Blind Al makes me happy. <laughs> Blind no, Al's so good. Noticeable bit of trailer editing to not put focus on Weasel at any point. Yeah, because I think they were talked about... Re- <laughs> they were asked if they were going to replace TJ Miller and they like... We're too far into the edit. Yeah, it's like, like we've, we we've made the movie. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's, we're, we're in pro- we're in production. If, if you want to, if you want to get Cloverfield and yeah. redub all of his lines in that, be my guest. Yeah, <laughs> like, but like you only ever see him once briefly on like a freaking in a mirror or something. Yeah, so like, you can edit him out all you want. Just CGI Peter Cushion over him. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 get plumber in. <laughs> bring in plumber. Where's Where's Christopher Emergency Plumber? Um. Oh God. 
Uh, didn't see Colossus in the trailer, but I suppose he'd be, I, he, he's probably he'd be the one they finish right up to the last minute in terms of the visual yeah, effects. Yeah, yeah. And he's in it because he's in he's in, he's on the poster. Yeah, and he's, the actor's in it. Oh, so. it's Great version the of the character. Talked a little bit about it in an interview. Some it's such again. a great version of the character yeah. that will annoy so many diehard Colossus fans, but just be grateful that your cast of thousands X Men oh, franchise has at least a version of I, this character who is entertaining. I and think memorable. he's a really good version of Colossus. Like, <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm not a purist by any means. I'm not like I will not. If you can introduce a take that is just like, okay, this works, yeah. you're happy with it. I'm yeah. not I'm not someone who will crucify an adaptation for not being accurate enough. I freaking love the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Yeah. And by the Mandarin, I mean the persona played by Trevor Slattery. And I mean, the fact that it's all fake based, I on, will, based on a mythology. I, I think will that's crucify really cool. an adaptation for missing the point. Yeah. Or oh, the God, spirit yeah. of what it's adapting. But like plot by plot moments and stuff like that. And like character backstories. As long as they still service the story, yeah, and it remains within the spirit of what it, the story does, mm. because stories are distinct from mediums. Yeah. Um. Oh God, we got philosophical there, didn't we? No, but this um, also leads beautifully into our next topic. Actually, yes, it does. Yeah. Um, then, then you know, you can't. I can't really get. To, I can't really get too mad at an adaptation for taking liberties. It's when, like, with the X Men movies, I don't, I don't dislike a lot of the X Men movies because they're not like point by point story adaptations of particular arcs or yeah. like I don't dislike Days of Future Past because it doesn't actually adapt Days of Future Past. I dislike Days of Future Past because it's not very good and it also it doesn't it fails to capture the essence of what I as an X Men fan like about the X Men mm. and I think works about their characters and their dynamics together. Um so yeah it's 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 I'm happy for them to make changes, and I've no idea how I got to that point, but that's what I think. But it does still beautifully segue into our next topic. Uh, how what did I get talking about adaptational changes? What the fuck we were talking Colossus. about? Colossus. Colossus. Colossus! Yeah, so I love this version of Colossus, because <laughs> it doesn't have to be accurate to the comics as long as it feels like Colossus. He still feels like Colossus. He's the, he's yeah. the, big, he's the big Steel Boy Scout. Yeah. But he's... You know, They're just playing up the Boy yeah. Scout a bit to make him a nice contrast to Deadpool's philosophy Yeah, in a movie that's a Deadpool movie, so it doesn't have to have Colossus in it, but they chose yeah. to give that character, a beloved character, and a new place to play after he was kind of shortchanged twice, he is, or three times in the X-Men movie. He is heightened in a way that makes him more comedic, but that's because of the, 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 film the story in. that he's in. Like you could e- quite easily use that version of the character in a, in a more serious story, mm. and he'd be a more serious version of that character because you respond because yeah, they just give him a couple of light-hearted yeah. moments. It doesn't dep- make you go, oh yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. too dissimilar. It, it depends what story that person that that character's in as to how they act in in context. Um, oh my god, <laughs> that got film theory. Um, but actual film theory. Not- let's now. I have a theory yeah. about this film. A. So there was another um, Super Bowl trailer. Yeah, that we, that we didn't mention earlier. Um, the long rumored third Cloverfield film, which we now know was called the Cloverfield Paradox, got a trailer on the Super Bowl, and as as rumored, it was indeed coming to Netflix very soon. Yeah, turns out it uh, d- just dropped on Netflix like after the game ended. Yeah, if I remember correctly, the end of the trailer says streaming on Netflix tonight. Ugh. It was like oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, now before we even go into talking it's about the movie itself. It's kind of come out of itself, nowhere. Yeah, before we go into talking about the movie itself. Fucking genius marketing. Oh yeah, fucking great marketing. Biggest audience in America that night. So they'll have paid a pretty penny for this trailer. Yeah. Um, but it's Netflix. They're in shit tons of debt and they don't give a fuck. They give no They're ass. riding this train all the way to the bottom. I wouldn't be surprised if Paramount paid for this, to be honest. Well, yeah, Paramount. It's a Paramount Netflix deal, yeah. Because this movie was finished a wee while and ago. The next Cloverfield movie, which apparently is code named Overlord. Okay. Um, and it's rumored to have already have been shot. Yeah. That, again, is apparently, this is all unconfirmed as far mm-hmm. as I'm aware. Still coming to cinemas. Okay. Okay. No Cloverfield information is ever confirmed until they, until the until, movie's until, out and you've seen until it. Until they let us know. So, <laughs> yeah. but to take it with a pinch of salt, but like, that sounds that sounds about right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, trailer dropped. 
So the majority of America that had Netflix and were willing to stay awake a bit later, two hours later after the Super Bowl ended that night, slapped on Netflix, grabbed a beer and watched The Cloverfield Paradox. The UK, we got it roughly 8am on Monday morning. Yeah, so not long after. So don't worry, we're not going to go too deep into spoiler territory on this because we know a lot of people might not have watched it yet. I am, but I'll give you sufficient warning. Yeah, we will We will talk spoilers, but we won't uh, We won't for a little bit, so don't worry, guys. Um, but yeah, uh, genius marketing again, continuing genius their tradition. Marketing. The original Cloverfield, for those who might have been too young to remember, it was 2008, we got a teaser trailer. Uh, I think it was with a few months to go before the film came out. It was still and in the production. Te- the teaser trailer was still... Not telling you the name of the movie. You knew it was a Paramount film. Yeah. You knew it was coming soon. And all that happened was freaking Statue of Liberty's head that, tore down a that street. That teaser trailer came out while the movie was still filming. It was amazing. The first poster uh, didn't have a title. No. Nope. It, it was it was brought out again later with a title. But like the first poster was just the Statue of Liberty with a clearly recently ripped off head and a trail in the water yep. leading toward New York. I was like, what is Although, this? if you mirror... The uh, smoke coming from New York City. Mm. You see the face of the monster in it. You do. Which again is all stuff that we all realise later, which is genius. Uh, it's also, layered, man. If you were a fan of J.J. Abrams' work, because um, again he's produced these movies. That was the first one was directed by Matt Reeves. Um, if, if you Matt Reeves. Oh yeah. If you're a fan of J.J. Abrams' work, you would have been following the stuff that went on in Alias with uh, and a couple of his other projects at, like Lost. Where there's a fictional soft drink called Slusho. Slusho! And if you found the Slusho uh, website, yeah. it was the website named after its uh, company. I can't remember the call that, but like its company that uh, made it. Tegruto. That's it. Um, you would have found links on the site, because it's, it's like a viral site, a fake yeah. site for this soft drink company. You would have found links on there that led to a thing about marine biology and, and marine conservation, yeah. which in turn led to a website about satellite monitoring and the fact that they believe that one's about to come out of orbit. If you watched Cloverfield and wanted to know a little bit more and started to dig deeper than just the found footage monster movie, which again, works perfectly on its own. Oh yeah, it's thing. great. It's but really if you want to dig deeper, you start to find hints that at the end of the movie, in that final shot of the final bit of home video footage of them on the Ferris wheel at Coney Island, you can see something dropping out of the sky. And when you start to piece everything together, it means a satellite came out of orbit, smashed in a specific place within the ocean and awoke something that was dormant. That was what the idea was like, oh, well done you, you figured out what the fuck's there going was a on. Whole, there was a whole... Yeah. Um, well, vir- viral sites was a big reality part of game, an arg. Mm. An arg of argle. An argle, bargle, fargle. Uh. Um, then, I mean, it was so effective, it was part of my film studies syllabus in 2008. Like, yeah. as it was happening, yeah. they, they made us follow it, because they were like, look at this. Like, look at this now and see what's happening and Look at what it. they're doing. We were like, oh, Okay. Uh, Look some... upon my works and despair. Something similar happened in the lead up to Ten Cloverfield Lane. Now, yes. we what was the original title for that? Um, uh, the book, the, the, the cellar, the, the cellar, or the bunker. Or I think something? it was the cellar. I think the I remember, I remember oh. cellar for some reason. That I, I don't remember. But it was uh, in the run up to that, people who were paying attention, I guess, because there was no clue that there was another Cloverfield movie coming out. No, but any conspiracy theorist who just happened to still have in a tab somewhere. Those websites went on the one for the Slusho um, company, yeah. and it listed Employee of the Month for February 2016, uh, Howard, I can't remember the surname, but it, it's um, John Goodman's character. Yeah, he's the, uh, and, and there's a character in Call of Hill Paradox that shares a surname with him. Yeah, which is, I did, well, we'll get into their yeah, connections we'll in a minute, but the idea was that people were like, some people did spot it, they were like, hang on, something's been added to this freaking website, Yeah, and then nothing more was said about it. And then a week before 10 Cloverfield Lane came out, the trailer for 10 Cloverfield Lane came out. Yeah. Saying, oh, guess what? In a week and a bit in the cinemas, you're going to see this. Surprise, motherfuckers! Like Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Goodman and third dude. And in, another dude. Yeah, in a really freaking tense film that has Cloverfield in the title. And you're like, what's going on? We, what, what does that mean? And we all went to see it to discover that, holy shit, it's got nothing to do with Cloverfield per se. But it's a really tense, scary thriller about three people trying to hide out from a possible nuclear fallout and discovering what's really going on um, with the person who's brought them down there. And it's great. And Ten Cloverfield Lane is freaking great. And it's a really creepy, unnerving movie that has an ending that did sort of polarise a lot of people. The ending takes a very swift turn in a different direction. 
in a way where you sort of go, oh! I was talking about this with, with my girlfriend last night, mm. I, I, and we were just like, I, we both fucking love that. We both what, the film or the ending? Uh, the, but both. Okay. We loved Clo- 10 Cloverfield Lane, and we love the twist it takes at the end. Well, I kind of like the ending simply because it made me go, oh, I get it. Cloverfield is their blanket term for an anthology. Yeah. Like, these movies are all going to loosely be... Mo- they're going to be connected loosely in a way that is like, they're a monster movie in some way. Yeah. Um. So, that's it. And it was like, okay... Clubfield Paradox, we get the trailer, it's released two hours later on Netflix. Um, this movie, again, we're not going into spoilers yet, but this movie... Give us a plot, though. Give us a plot. <laughs> this movie tries to make sense of the previous two movies in a, in a, in a subtle yet ham-fisted Does way. Does it, though? It tries. Does it? It tries. Emphasis on tries. So this... An emphasis on fails? This question mark? This has been bouncing around as a script for years called yeah. God Particle. Much like The Cellar. Like, yeah. they, these were spec and scripts. They were uncompleted. Yeah. It, uncompleted. Incom- and that's why they weren't completed, because everyone didn't know what the fuck no the was. Yeah, um, they were incomplete spec scripts, going doing the rounds in Hollywood. Uh, like, if you don't know what a spec script is, it's, I suppose it's the best way to describe it is it's, it's a really freaking solid idea, and it's a mostly written piece. Yeah, it's, it? it's, it's more than a pitch. Yeah. It's, More it's, than a treatment, not quite a full script. Yeah, so it's like, hey, movie makers, um, we'd really like to do this. If you want us to finish the script or maybe buy it off of us and finish it yourself, here it is. Enjoy. Mm. And, and that does happen from time to time, and, and, and which is great. And it seems what's happened here is J.J. Abrams' company, Bad Robot, have gone, let's find a bunch of really cool, vaguely sci-fi spec scripts and bring them under our umbrella. So we'll put a tangent in them somewhere that makes them all fit the Cloverfield mould. Now, as of 10 Cloverfield Lane, we believe what that was, was the monster movie sci-fi approach. Yeah. Because the end of 10 Cloverfield Lane is makes you go, oh, okay, there is a bit of monster movie stuff going on here. Oh, I think we assume the same with this, like, because you would after the second film. This one leans much more heavily on trying to make a connection. But it feels very much like a script that didn't have room for that the way the movie has done it. Like it, it, it the, if Ten Cloverfield Lane made you go, oh right, there's a there's a there's a blanket monster movie vibe here. Mm. This one makes you go, oh, I can see exactly where they've randomly shoved references in to make you go, oh, it's actually connected to the other two movies. See, in you some say way. that, but I'm I'm just looking here at C. Robert Cargill on yeah. Twitter. It's at Masselman on Twitter. He's a, a screenwriter, film critic and screenwriter and novelist. Yeah. Uh, he worked worked with Scott Derrickson quite a lot. Wrote, he's, he's a but... film critic who 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 um what's it put his money where his mouth was as far as pissy writers are concerned. Yes. Uh, I'm like, he, okay, I'll show you that I've learned he, stuff by being a critic. Co wrote Sinister. Um, oh fuck! Well, there you go. Co wrote Doctor Strange. Uh, fucking so hell. So yeah. he's doing all right. Then. Yeah. Um <laughs> and. And he says, "Critics don't know what they're talking about." Look at this guy. In response, <laughs> like he learned about your craft through his job. In response to someone asking him how 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 it was, he says, "I enjoyed it, though I've read a couple of drafts of the script over the years because Scott and I considered working on it years ago." So this is back when it was God Particle. Um, yeah, it's a very different film from how it started. Anyone who thinks the Cloverfield stuff was tacked on is way off. It was completely rewritten for it. It wasn't a Cloverfield movie at the time, just a science fiction film titled The God Particle. The Cloverfield uh, Path... There's a misspelling here. I think it means partition. Uh, Came much later in the process, so much I was shocked to discover it had become part of the universe. So what he's saying there is is that the the certain stuff was just tacked on. No. It was... was, The script was rewritten to fit this stuff in. Right, so this will be so, missing yeah. a bunch of, of stuff not, from the original yeah, because it's, it's been retooled quite it's been, heavily. It's been retooled extensively to the point where it's not. I can figure out roughly yeah. when it was probably written. When, when was the Hadron Collider first being talked about? Oh God, that was 2000 and... In terms of like mainly in, in news and media. 11, 2010? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it was about 2010 that the spec script first started. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Because a few times they make mention of the main thing being a version of a Hadron Collider. So that's someone sitting down going, we don't know what's going to happen if this thing, when this thing powers up exactly aside from a couple things. What if 
it broke down dimensions. Mm. Oh my god, I'm going to write a film about it. But it's going to be a big Hadron Collider. So for the sake of safety, it's going to be off planet. And that was that was probably the initial thought. So like let, before we go any further, let's let's yeah. outline the plot of this movie. So Cloverfield Paradox mm-hmm. is set in twenty twenty eight. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, the Earth is ten, facing... yeah, ten years from now, and this yeah. film is released ten years since the first one. So it's a bit yeah, of, it's decades. A bit of a, it's the twenty year cycle. Everyone likes tens. Um, <laughs> in this movie, everyone is nostalgic for the, tw- the early two thousands because the twenty year cycle. Oh, Jesus Christ! Has Paul, replaced the thirty year um, cycle. So in the near future, <laughs> um, it's. Earth has got an age of crisis. Is that there's a bit of the movie this beginning saying basically everything's going to run out. Earth's finite fuel resources and energy resources are going to be depleted in five years. Mm. So tensions are running high. The world is on the brink of war. Uh, these massive shortages of electricity, of fuel, of everything. Um, and uh, Ava Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Guru Mabantha Raw is the actress. Yes, I'm sorry who, if I butchered who, that name. Lucy and I spent the first five minutes watching it yesterday, going, "Oh my god, who is that? Oh my mm. god, who is that? We recognise, recognise." Lucy looked her up and she went, "Tish," and I'm like, "Yeah, what?" She was like, "Tish," and I was like, "You're gonna have to be a little bit more descriptive." She went, "Tish Jones from Doctor Who," and I went, "Yeah, oh right, okay, that makes sense." Yeah, she's been in. She's a British actress. Been in also uh, Guru Mabantha Raw. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, she was in Bell. It's probably the the biggest mm. film role yeah. she's had. Um, she was leading that. She's also in the upcoming Wrinkle in Time adaptation. Oh, um, she's she's really good. Like, she's again, very good. Also, be, be, also worth mentioning that this is a very strong and very diverse cast. Yeah, I mean, I, there, it, there, there's a reason for it inside the movie as well that is quite convenient, which is there are astronauts, it's a and scientific mission. experts yeah, yeah. from from different countries, but it's, it's, it's which also nice adds to to, adds to the tension in a couple of ways because back on Earth, this energy crisis, like is, certain yeah, countries, some... obviously the slightly more um, trigger happy ones, yeah, yeah. are on the verge of starting conflict to acquire the last of the natural resources yeah. and. Uh, and there's a brief moment where the Russian member of the crew believes that the German member of the crew might be stalling the yeah. experiment on purpose, and so to help gain intelligence for Germany. And, Ava and Hamilton wait for is them this... to occupy a certain yeah. part. Of the... well, we'll get to that. We'll get yeah. to that. But, but that, um, that's quite nice because Ava joins this mission, um, the, he- the Helios mission on Cloverfield Station, mm-hmm. which houses a enormous particle accelerator called the Shepard. Yes, which. In theory, if they can get it working right, should create uh, an, a potentially endless supply of energy. It should shepherd a new energy source to our world yes. and guide us to a new um, prosperity. It could cut to two years later. Yeah, it's still not working, mm. and everyone's fraught. And, and they're about got... to do test forty-seven. Yeah, and, oh, oh, and they have they had enough resources planned into the mission to do 50 tests and they're about to do test 47 mm. and they're not making any progress everyone's pissed off everyone's homesick mm. they fire up the accelerator and it seems to work and then shit just goes haywire and it kind of t- to say more than that is kind of spoilery but weird stuff starts happening shit they can't explain starts happening they're it's, not sure how they're going to get home yeah they don't know how they're going to get home happening. Uh, it's and it's all a bit and then also in this you see Ava's husband Michael back on Earth and some weird shit starts happening there. Yeah, so we get to see yeah. the effects of what's happened back down on Earth. Yeah. Um, um. So yeah, the Cloverfield Paradox. That's the plot. I, if I could describe it in an unspoilery way, PG thirteen Event Horizon. I was thinking that yeah. I. I maybe was... maybe released too soon after life. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, it's alien again kind of. Have you of. seen have you seen life? Not yet, I really. Oh, give life it a watch, man. It's really now, good. now that I know that it now that I know that it's like it is sort of aping a little too close to a few of the movies, I just want to watch it because you recommended it. You said like, oh the gore is surprisingly and body horror is surprisingly bigger than you thought it would be, considering yeah. like the the stars are sort of not the people oh, you yeah, assume yeah. to be in no, a body horror totally. movie. It's it's like, it's great right. like that. Um, yeah. Well, see, I, this, there's some body horror in this. Not as extreme. Yeah. But very very PG-13, really... but it's still and, sort of and, like... It's the kind where you think about it more and you go, oh, actually, there's, oh. There's, 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 a couple, there's a couple... One instance which is <laughs> particularly horrific mm. from like a... Just a, like, oh god, that looks like it hurts point is of view. Someone appearing somewhere yeah. that they don't belong. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that is... Ooh. And then mm. another another <laughs> another moment of body horror, which is almost played for laughs. Yeah. In a, is that the... in a way that I, yeah, in yeah. a way that I really like because Chris O'Dowd's in this movie. And which I did not know going he's in. Fucking great! In As it. the credits started to roll, over shots of them, I was like, "That guy looks like Chris O'Dowd." Chris O'Dowd comes up on screen. I'm like, "Yeah, it's Roy. It's it's Roy. Roy's our boy. Roy's our boy." Um, <laughs> yeah, he's great in this. He's and really he's, good in it because uh, he's not because he is he is uh, funny, but he's not comic. His character. Ele- like relieves the tension a yeah. few times. Giggity relieves the tension a few times, in a way that could only be done and not be jarring by casting a, co- a comedic actor who can convincingly play it straight. Yeah, hence why he's in the part. He's very good. I found out a bit of casting news about the God Particle earlier on. Yeah, John Krasinski was signed on to do it, and then ah. for scheduling reasons couldn't. And I'm looking at the film now, going. Yeah, that was the part he was totally going to play. Because it? yeah. again, it's that someone who can do, who yeah. can handle the seriousness of the the, the thriller slash horror scenario they're in, it's a, but be funny. It is um, like hands down a really great cast. Who, who else have you got in this? Daniel Bruhl. Daniel Bruhl is is Schmidt. He's the German physicist who's working on the uh, working on the um, the the shepherd along yeah. with um, Zhi Zhang. She's mm. great. Yeah. Because again, they make a wonderful little choice in there where she she never breaks like language she never speaks english ever never no not in the whole movie she never speaks english she's always subtitled and other characters always oh. reply to her in either their native language or in english, english or, or in in chinese, chinese Schmitt, a couple of times Schmitt yeah. and her are a couple yeah or and, or, or are blossoming well, yeah, yeah. They and, they, of... and they and they and they and they talk to each other in chinese and, it, and also Everyone kind of speaks Chinese. It's it's kind of yeah. It's one of those it's, similar to Firefly. It's kind of, it's sort of implied through context that Chinese is, is a much much more widespread language in the yeah. future, which makes sense because yeah. you know they're they're a superpower and and, and you know the osmo- cultural osmosis and globalization of culture makes sense that it would be similar a, to a Firefly as well. Language. Religion follows them to space. Yes, uh, like, John, three, three of the characters are like you know clearly uh, um, John Ortiz who plays Monk. Yeah, yeah. Christian or Catholic, yeah. and and they, you know, that they, 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 you have a moment where you see Daniel Burrell's reaction, like where they're praying for the forty seventh one to where you see him sort on his face, be like, really, oh for God's sake! And you got David, ironically, <laughs> David Ayello yeah. is uh, yeah. is the he's, captain. I he's, suppose he's would be the uh, Keel. He's the yeah the commander of the mission. Um, he's very good. British actor playing in America. He's as... very good. He gets some really interesting stuff. To oh do. yeah. Um, it, it's um, a solid cast. Yeah, uh, it's really good. We get an additional... Uh, Elizabeth Debicki. Debicki um, is an additional character who uh, rocks up during the course of, this, of the events. Um, yeah. Who's the um, Russian? Who's the Russian player? Uh, d- 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 Axel Henne plays Volkov, he's, who's the Russian crew member. He's great. I, I feel he's denied something. I, I feel like he got a lot more to give and he's kind of denied it by the way they choose to tell his story, which is a shame. But... What is he in? It's, an, inter- it's an interesting cast who all do a damn good job oh he's in the Martian he's the he's, yeah. the, he's the is he Russian in the Martian but he's like he's <laughs> no he's the Martian and the Russian he's the he's the European yeah. I can't remember if he's Russian in that but he's the European crew member in the, in the Martian um, uh, Vogel and this is Volkov so oh, lots of V's um, um, it, it's it's an interesting cast who all do a pretty damn good job with the, the yeah, roles and, and good, stuff they're given. Good performances all around. Some of the Can't characters follow. could benefit from a bigger development. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because inevitably, guys, in case you can't tell, again, no spoilers, but in case you can't tell, it's a space movie on a, spe- on a space station where stuff starts to go horribly wrong and it's a horror. You're going to lose some people oh, as the yeah. story goes on. And it, it, some of them do feel like fodder, despite it being a relatively small group, which is a shame. Because yeah. like even in Alien, you get a sense of who everyone is. So when shit starts to hit the fan, you do feel the loss of every character I think as they go. It's fifty-seven minutes before you see the alien in Alien. Yeah, yeah. Before and it, the chest burst, and it scene. is worth it because so you've got you nearly, know everyone. Nearly an hour of that film before you get the chest burst scene. So you know who everyone is. You, you you get a feeling for everyone. Whereas with this, it does feel like a lot of the character is shorthand. Yeah. Um, someone made a comment that the the, the opening sequence. The opening sequence montage looks like it was taken from a bunch of deleted scenes that give more characterization, but I'm not sure I buy into that. 
I think that. I, I think, think, that I, might think not I think. I think people are just in an alien covenant world now, yeah. aren't we? Where like, oh look, a bit of development about these characters. Oh, it, it was saved for an online scene. Yeah, yeah. Instead of being I don't put know, in I, the movie, I think it's. I think it's a fairly tight edit, and structurally, it, it structurally it's a bit of a mess. But I think that is sort of deliberate because chaos is such a big theme of it. Yeah, and like when when the shepherd turns on and does its thing. It does throw them into to chaos. Get, in fact, it gets a little ham fisted at the front with that because you've got Donald mm. Logue in a, in a one scene wonder as an. As oh, a, that was the, the author who has written this book called the Cloverfield Paradox about oh. what might happen if they if, if when the shepherds turned on and he's like, "This gonna it's gonna tear the dimensions apart." There's gonna be uh, he, he describes and, it as monsters and demons. Yeah, and it's like. Really, really, guys, yeah. and that I think is the, I think the biggest problem this movie is like, whether it's it's you know it was rewritten heavily during the process based obviously on the there were varying the reports of of, of it, how far into production yes, a lot of these changes were made. It and does it does feel like a couple of the moments specifically that moment. Yeah, um, that feels like it's just thrown in and to be fair. and very specifically the final shot of the movie and also and for also me, a certain bit of news footage as well. It feels like they've put that in to try and make you go, "Oh, it's Cloverfield." Honestly, for and it's me, like because um, the the freaking news footage all, doesn't make any sense. All of the stuff on Earth <laughs> after Ava leaves at the beginning, yeah, feels tacked on. What, the, the conversation in the car at the beginning and stuff? No, after oh, that. Oh, right. Okay. Everything oh, oh, based after, yeah. after that. Yeah. Which feels tacked on. Yeah. To me. I, I don't think you need it. I don't think any of that stuff... Which is, again, a shame because the actor playing Michael is very good. Yeah. And suddenly I, I, he's, he's sort of given what feels like a... Huh. But, that, plot. but that is clearly the B plot. If not the C plot, a B plot that borrows visual aesthetics from both previous Cloverfield movies yeah. in a way to try and make you go, "Oh, yeah, oh," and it's like, and, and, <laughs> like, just because it it's a sort of reference doesn't yeah. make it good content. And it, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't quite. It doesn't quite mesh up with. Uh, also, because it. Uh, the, the, this movie. This movie suffers the way from in which trying to make with the, Cloverfield yeah. a universe. That's why it suffers. It, it doesn't. Well, trying to make Cloverfield a multiverse. Well, well, yeah, no, but I mean, like, it, trying to make trying right. to make the movies connect. What Which was it, so what was so refreshing about Ten Cloverfield Lane was it was just oh, it's anthology and there's a loose there's a loose theme that's yeah, connected. and and I think whereas this one's like oh no no that they all happen for a reason because the tagline for this yeah. uh, on the Netflix trailer and everything is ten years ago something happened. It's sort of like ten years ago, uh, it happened. It's time you found out why. It's like the tagline on one of the trailers. It's like, yeah. Oh, what? And it's not really that simple because in the universe that it's apparently based on, if they're all based in the same universe, the events of Cloverfield have nothing to do with this because no. Cloverfield takes but place think, in two thousand eight. I, I don't know about you, but I'd um, already assumed from Ten Cloverfield Lane that these all these are taking place in a sort of multiverse. Yeah, like that, it's, that it's, shares it's the, it's common the elements zone. between like, worlds. It's the yeah. Twilight Zone. They're not. They're not all set in the same, set on the same earth. Yeah. It's just, oh, this is this week's story. And some of them, yeah. depending on how long the series goes on, mm. might overlap and intersect. And yeah, you know. I mean, there's ways to do that. Again, I've still not finished Black Mirror series four, but there's an episode called The Black Museum. Yeah, uh, which is about it's it's an anthology episode, um, and in it is a museum of technological stuff. Well, I, I... and several of the exhibits, not really spoken about, but focused on in shot yeah. are easter eggs to make you go oh that's from that episode well Black Even... Mirror update for those of you who are following along oh. um, I have now <laughs> watched I've not watched the Christmas special you've not watched White Christmas but I've watched the rest of season 2 oh so I'm getting there okay slowly so you saw White Bear and, and uh, I, I watched the Waldo woman Waldo, the other day yeah. fucking hell that destroyed me that one. Waldo's terrifying because retrospectively, it's like he predicted the future. Waldo got to Waldo me... is Trump, the TV episode. Waldo it's got to me because of just that... some some elements of that part of it, the electoral process. It was the it was the the the, 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 the main character, the, the comedian guy. Mm. I just I just really related to him. Yeah, oh fuck, like, yeah. If you're if you're, like, if, you're, if, you're if you're a performer, you, you really really get into that 
Yeah, that hit me. That hit mm. me fucking hard. Especially the ending, because you're just sort of like, oh, fuck, that's a nightmare. Fucking I think we've all had I'll bastard. do it without that graffiti. Poor bastard. Um, um, anyway, uh, Cloverfield Paradox. Um, yeah, so I kind of assumed already from 10 Cloverfield Lane that the, the, the movies were kind of set in a multiverse, but this makes it explicit and attempts to frame the events of the movie as sort of the catalyst yeah. for, for what kicks off horrible events in other multiverses. Like, it's a sort of ripple effect. Yeah. Um, but here's the problem. You need to see what the other side of this divide is between our, unquote, reality yeah. and, and where other things come from. Um, again, minor spoilers. Kind of don't. Yeah, like, this movie doesn't... Ex- here's, the, here's the problem. I saw a lot of the reviews say this is tonally jarring. I disagree. I think the the horror and the drama and the comedy are way oh, quite nicely. Oh, there's some lovely, creepy stuff in this. Um, the problem is, when you're in a haunted house slash like weird shit's happening to people in one location scenario, yeah. the first two or three things that happen are the ones where you should really not know what's happening because you need to be disoriented and freaked out like them. But by the fourth, fifth and sixth thing, you have a handle on what's going on and you're processing it like the characters are and you're getting ready to do whatever it takes in Act 3 to stop it, slash quell it, slash escape from it, etc, etc. And they, In this, it never gets to the second phase of it. No, it's they just keep, they weird keep, shit keeps happening. Yeah, they keep explaining what's going on, but they never establish rules for what's going on. Yes. Or Because there are no rules. And yeah. they keep saying there are no rules. Like So stuff just happens randomly. Stuff starts to demagnetise, and you think, Oh right, so that's what's happening in one scene. It's yeah. like magnet, like things start to magnetize to a wall. But then the thing that happens isn't related to that at all, really, no. and makes no sense because of that. Um, uh, uh, and then the problem is there is a suggestion of rules. Yeah. When a character arrives, and you go, "Oh, yeah, okay," but then the other things that occur don't match up with that at all. No. So I. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say because I want to get into spoilers. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna say, let's give it. Let's give a sum up. A, a quick, a quick review. The Cloverfield Paradox makes the lost mistake of ending with you having more questions than answers. Yeah. As its own movie, it suffers because of that because it's trying to appease something bigger that has no relevance to the story that it's telling and, and shouldn't have intruded so much. I I would describe it... I don't think it's as bad as the reviews are making out. Oh, there's some, there are some reviews that have just been brutal. Oh, like the, 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 the average of what I've seen have been like two stars or less. Oh, yeah. Um, it's getting savaged. I, I'd, say it's, I'd say it's a strong two, maybe two and a half overall. Oh, five. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I... I, I, I I recommend giving it a go if you if you like stuff like Event Horizon and Alien and you're just curious to see. Yeah, some it's stuff got a lot of that lines. flavor, and um, it it's like a a very well presented straight to DVD sci fi thriller. Yeah, it's a which mess. might be why it went to Netflix instead of theater. They yeah. might have felt this is gonna bomb, and they the might theaters. have known it wasn't up to scratch. And it, it, it is a mess, and it's not up to the standard of the previous two Cloverfield movies. Mm. Um, but it's an interesting mess, and it's a well performed mess. And there are some moments where I was like, oh, that's actually really cool. So, uh, overall. Overall. Overalls. Overall. Um, an interesting mess. Yeah. An interesting mess. A paradox. Also, it's on fucking Netflix. So, if you've already got Netflix, it's not going to cost you anything. So yeah. you might as well. It's only going to cost you an hour and 40 minutes. And if you don't have Netflix, month's free trial, mate. Watch it for free. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't burn your month's free trial just for the Cloverfield paradox, but... No, we've got 30 days extra to binge, like, Rick and Morty and... Yeah, that's true. That thing with Ted Danson in. Oh, anyway, good place. Yeah. It's, it's very good. Is it? Yeah. I, I do want to watch it. Kanisha's been... Kanisha's watched it all. It, I and I have watched a bunch of it <laughs> in her company. It's really fucking good. It's Ted Danson in a bow tie. Oh, yeah. yeah. How, how can you go wrong? Well... Well, let's find out. Spoiler! Uh, yeah, so spoilers for Call of Duty Paradox. If you're bothered about spoilers, although honestly, I wouldn't be too much, um, then... D- 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 just skip to the to the email. You got to put time codes on this episode, Chris. Oh yeah, skip I have to done. the email time codes. Skip to the loo, my darling. Um, this film makes several visual parallels to the first Cloverfield, almost as reference, 
but in a way that when you start to think about it, you go, wait, that doesn't make sense. Mm. So they see news footage on that Earth of part of the ship possibly having collapsed on, into the ocean. On the on the other on the other on the Earth, parallel Earth, yeah. Then a, what which, which, which implies happened. that that's what happened to their ship, maybe or because here's, here's the thing: on the other hand, they are pretty much outright state that the station came down. Right. So how is um, uh, I think he's character. I've forgotten the name now. Uh, Jansen. How, how is Jansen character. alive then? Has she just been teleported from the crashing ship into their version? Seemingly, yes. Now, I thought the way it was working, perhaps, was they've switched places with the other one. Which, which, well, that, which well, would make, a, more, which would make a bit more, which would make Earth. a bit more sense if suddenly the sentient detached arm of Mundi is giving them hints, because then it at least sort of suggests, oh, there's another version of them who figured out what's going on, yeah. trying to communicate to their universe and say these guys. Like maybe they they another version of the ships arrived back in the original dimension, and they've suddenly got two gyrospheres. They're like, "What the fuck? Hang on, this mm-hmm. this belongs to the other one." So they've their Russians are already dead. Maybe their version of um, oh Daniel Brawl Schmidt. Their version of Schmidt has killed the Russian guy in that one because their version of Schmidt was a villain and, yeah. and was doing because of conspiring. Vol- 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 so he's already dead. Yeah. And they've realised that certain things are connecting. Like yeah. maybe the worms started to appear in their universe and their Russian guy already. They're like, "What the hell?" Yeah. And before he died, he was talking to himself and trying. To, he was warning him, himself about Schmidt. It and his eye, his eye and was going funny because that's uh, that's what I thought uh, they were suggesting. Was he, was, he was merging yeah. with another. Him, like they were halfway house. And was his eye going funny because the worms were inside So they're like, or... we need to find a way to connect. It seems, it seems that biologically things are, like, biolo- in terms of us, yeah. things are shifting and phasing. Yeah. So we're going to put the gyrosphere in his body and maybe they'll get it. We need to find a way to let them know that. Fuck. Well, here's the thing with, like, do you know what I mean? Like, they, they needed yeah. to establish more rules. Because as it stands, the Russian guy's eye starts moving independently. He talks to himself, sort of, while there's clearly worms under his skin. He 3D prints a gun in a bagel machine. Which is great. Stupid, but it's great. great. It'd make more sense if there was another universe where they didn't have a bagel machine. They were literally 3D printing tools, and they were able to I say, I think it like, may well have been 3D printing tools. I think it was but, not just... I did, I don't yeah, think, I, don't I mean, think it, I think I'm only calling it a was bagel a, maker because of that note yeah. that said, like, worst bagel I think it's a multi-purpose ever. 3D printer. I don't think it's just, just there for shit bagels. bagels. Um, so like he talks to himself, then he dies, he vomits and dies. Then he explodes. No, no, no. They he explodes into worms out of the mouth. Yeah. And then they open him up in a way that no surgeon would ever open anyway. You don't just cut down the middle and pull. You like makes sense. The doctor you, didn't want to do it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and then they pull a gyrosphere. The medical out officer of him. didn't want to they, cut they him pull open. Pull a gyrosphere out of him, which would obviously be in there because of how big it is. Yeah, it's chunky. So. It doesn't make... It's new a hat. Um... It does not make sense! I call this the moth effect. The, the, the moth effect. The more you think okay. about it, the more it pisses you off. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are some really... Co- that, that's Like I said, if it was just three instances of, oh my god, what the fuck is happening, I don't understand. Yeah. And then things start to make a little more sense from that point on. You can think back and go, oh, that happened because of that, that because of that, and it, it trusts you as an audience to have the intelligence to sort of play the game of, and why did that happen? Oh yeah, because of mm. this, and it's like there you go, you've pieced it together yourself. Mm. Whereas instead, it never answers any of it ever. Um, but in a way, where the more you think about it, the more you're like, no, there isn't a pattern. So you're just doing random shit to me. This makes no sense. Like the magnet scene, Mundy's death. Suddenly, the wall in that room becomes magnetized, and all the tools start hitting it. And you see, like, the, 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 the gel that he uses, like, the metallic gel that he uses to seal up all the yeah. wires start to sort of fizzle. And, it and sort of you were seeing thinking... so much of that gel that was like, this is going to come into play Yeah, it's going to be on. used somewhere. And the way you see it, you think, oh, my God, it's the magnet's that strong. It's ripping that stuff apart. Yeah. And the way I thought it was going to happen was it was just going to pierce through him and keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it hentai's him for some reason. It Superman 3's him. Yeah. It grabs him and then he's suddenly part of the machine. But you don't hear, like, the magnet... Like, it makes sense if the things went past him, maybe, 
and then it magnetised in reverse and everything shot backwards. Yeah, but it grabs him and pulls him back. It grabs him and pulls him like, back and then you see him and it's sort of, it's, it it's almost like if, aliens. It's, it's like when they're in the war. It's like, It's almost why? as if the station becomes And then sentient. no character references his death, but they assume there's only three people left when think he's, Jensen's killing them well, all. Well, it, it, it explodes. Oh, the section yeah, is in the, the section is both. Okay, yeah, um, so, yeah, and then they go to it later on. But, but, but like you say, the way they show it, it makes it look like it's a sentient creature. Yeah. And it's like, why? And, and what's, that element, do, but what's that going to do with the magnetisation? There is an element of a question of how sentient the station is. Yeah, because it makes it look like... Well, that's the thing. When he's his arm initially, which again was yeah. a fucking great section, when his arm's being pulled around in the wall, I assumed it was the other version of them or whatever trying yeah. to get hold of them in some way. Like, maybe to them an arm's come through the fucking wall. They're like, ah! And they're trying, they don't know what to do and they're yanking it around. I obviously I, I obviously understand why the film didn't keep cutting back and forth between two versions. That would be really stupid. But the more things happen, the more you realise, no, there's not a mirror version of the ship because that version of the ship has crashed and exploded already. Yeah. That being said, fucking love how they find Jensen. That's yeah. terrifying. It's that some Cronenberg level body horror that. It's the sort of thing that we never really see, but is talked about when you talk about things about that teleport. Yeah, like Nightcrawler in the X Men film, for example, is always like you know in X Men Two, he's like I have to, I have to have been there, or I have to be able to picture it. Yeah, to be able to do it, and that's what the risk is with Cerebro at the end of the makeshift Cerebro is that he's never seen it, and he just has to trust. Um, is it Jean who goes in? With yeah, him? yeah, he just has to trust her. And they go through, but like the idea of like, oh fuck, yeah, what if, what if Shadow Cat phased through a wall and then suddenly somehow her powers were taken from her and she's halfway through a wall? She wouldn't occupy that space. It wouldn't be like she's just stuck in a concrete like gap. Yeah, her fucking guts and insides are yeah. now in concrete. Like she'd be dead. And this was sort of a take on that. It was Jensen's teleported from her version of the station, and is in the fucking wall. So naturally, the wires that would be where they are are where they are. Yeah, that was a great idea. She's fused into the stu- into the into the. Because of course, she's sat there, and the longer she's there, it's burning. And like, cause it's all it's they sort of show that it's like hot panels. It's not an easy. It's not just wires. It's yeah, like they had to, the to cut her out. Fucking horrific! Great way to start the mystery. Yeah, kind of goes down. Yeah, from it doesn't there. really go anywhere, <laughs> and it kind of. I was. I got a bit of shade. I got some shades of sunshine from it as well. Yeah. Where, and I, I, yeah. I think it also has the same problem that Sunshine has, where <laughs> towards the end it just becomes a slasher movie in space. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jen, Jensen goes off the goes off the reservation. Is like I can't let you doom my world. An interesting motivation. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. But the problem is the way she's shot, and the choices she's given in terms of like her performance for the shots. Lucy was saying it throughout the movie. She was like, she's going to be a baddie. And I said, how do you mean? She's like, the way they keep shooting her, they're trying yeah. to make it look like she's We, had, we had the something. same thing. We had the same But this is before she's obviously made that decision. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the film shoots her like she's a villain. And it's really weird. Because she doesn't really make a bad choice until then. That's when she's like, no, I have to do this. And and it's just, she's a sympathetic villain. And she's got a very good point when it comes to um, Ava. Because what the fuck was Ava going to do when she gets down onto Parallel Earth and suddenly is like, hi, Parallel Me and my still alive children on this Earth. I yeah. want to be part of the family. It's like, no. Well, then she just starts talking about like, oh, I don't have to, I don't, I don't have to be with part of the family. I just want to save them. Because the whole thing is that she lost... Oh, which is fine. Her but, and her husband but, lost her children because they had like, an illegal message. power yeah. siphon in their house and it started a fire and the kids died in the fire, which hmm. didn't happen... But is it, on, is the, it, um, on the parallel, earth, she's still there, and she's the liaison with the station. Is it the uh, trying to remember the uh, thing Yellow's character? What's it called? The the guy in charge. Keel. Keel makes some very fucking valid points. He says you can't just waltz into their life. What about your Michael? Yeah. Like you're not thinking this through. And then we keep cutting back to Michael and, on Earth. And, and again, we've... like again, like this is this is getting into some deep shit. But the film touches on it briefly, which I did appreciate because it was kind of a deep debate. Although I think all the dialogue related to what happened to her kids felt really clunky. Yeah, it was really odd. Because um, it goes away for quite a bit of the movie. Yeah, like it. It just it just vanished. But it's, it's the way they do. It. Whenever they talk about it, they don't. You needed almost someone to sit down to talk to Jensen, maybe, and be like, right. She killed her own children. Well, not. It was a mistake. It wasn't that. But that's how she yeah. feels. That's how she feels. She feels about responsible it. for the deaths, and in, in, a, in a way, she sort of. And I think we also needed is. to. We also needed to see how desperate some people are for power on Earth. We never saw that. Earth just looked like our Earth. We were just told. Well, we got there was yeah because for we it. got we took like we see them they're in a, they're in a massive queue at a um 
petrol station. Mm. But the start like, of the movie and the traffic jam, and then the power, and they're not moving, and the power goes out, and they're like, "Oh, that's the fifth blackout today." Yeah, um, but I mean, like, we're then told that she rigged up an illegal power system yeah. to her house. Well, power siphon. She was siphoning power. Yeah, and illegally. it blew, and presumably burned down the house and killed the children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but several of the characters put into perspective the scale of the of the of the catastrophe here. Mm. So when he says, like, you know, like, what are you going to do to invade their lives? I almost want him to say, and also, no offence, your two kids may die in this reality. If we don't go back, our entire planet is going to die. I yeah. know, obviously, you're, you know, you and are also, a parent. They that, are your two children. Her planet, it yeah. is not wrong for you to want to save them. But at the same time, you can send Jensen back and yeah. have her tell them. Tell, yeah. tell other you what not to do. Because in the end, she ends up sending a message to them anyway. Yeah! Through... Even though they established earlier on that there was no communication. They couldn't get through. They could receive, but they couldn't transmit. But So what did she send the communication on? Uh, she put the code in and now they can transmit. This is bullshit! I don't oh, know! It's so stupid. It's so stupid. I don't know, like, yeah, I mean, this <laughs> this movie's a bit of a mess, but I, for the most part, I enjoyed it, and there's some neat, neat and creepy set pieces. Let's talk about the monster. <laughs> so, Ugh. when you first cut back to when you cut back to Earth, yeah, you Mike, find out you, Michael's driving to the hospital. Uh, before that, I was before. Yeah, because oh yeah, there's like there's like a oh, big red flash. Yeah, basically yeah. what happens is Michael wakes up in the middle of the night and there's fire in there's the fire downtown mm. and something's gone wrong and there's been some kind of disaster. And that was kind of nice. if I remember yeah. correctly, it's a red flash in. Clo- Ten Cloverfield Lane as well. Oh, it was like the red flash started off this. They, I, I don't yeah. think we ever see it, but it's described yeah. as a red flash, and then the air started to turn on people, and people yeah. started to fucking and, mutate. But uh, um, th- this, it, it's... which implies again, that's the, that's the only connection I could think of really to Ten Cloverfield Lane in terms of this thing opened up dimensions and fucked stuff up. Yeah. So you you re- you think that the atmosphere and the eventual alien spacecraft in Ten Cloverfield Lane are just something from another dimension dumped onto Earth? Going, well, I, I think, oh, the fuck are we doing? I think they imply that, that the atmosphere was part of the alien attack. In uh, so Lane. it's uh, so like so a like rever- opening, reverse War of the Worlds. It was the opening salvo. Yeah, I'll say reverse War of the Worlds. Red mist, but as a mist. Black smoke. Red weed, but instead, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black smoke. Yeah. Red weed wasn't a weapon. It Red was weed is a terrible a, strain. It was just a... a it, it was, it was a, a fucking it was terraform. Just, it, yeah, it was just mash and terraforming. <laughs> Let's listen to that again. Oh, I'm going to have to listen to that later now. Um, Let's get really drunk and listen to it. I've done that many times. <laughs> it's pretty fucking great. Oh, it's great. You just sit in a dark room Get absolutely sloshed. Surround. And surround listen to well. Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds as loud as you can. Dum, dum, dum. Oh, it's a way to spend an evening now. Dum, dum, dum. Um, such a fucking nerd. Um, but yeah, so, so like, it, but, but there's a red flash and fight out town, Michael goes to the hospital because they basically need as many people yeah. as they could possibly get and it's implied that he is, if not a doctor, he's a student doctor. Like, he's, he's yeah. learning. He's some kind of medical yeah. professional. So he's heading down and on the way he gets a phone call from... Uh, Ava's bosses, the guys in charge yeah. of the Cloverfield uh, Grumbo, shit. By the way. I recognised his voice mm. almost instantly. Yeah, um, and and uh, he he kept so he was saying like something's happened. We've lost the station. We don't know. Like, don't presume they're dead. But I want you to prepare for the possibility that this is yeah. not a good thing. Because what happens? We're going to find them. What happens is the best visual in the movie actually is when the experiment starts to go wrong and just at the, in the shot, not the focus of the shot. There's the like the ship goes into shock and you just see Earth fucking vanish in the yeah. window. It's really so, quick. It's not the focus. And I was like, oh, like that was the first thing in the whole movie that made me go, oh shit. From the point of view of the yeah. station, Earth vanishes and they don't know where they are the until they realize Earth, yeah. the station vanishes. vanishes and they don't know where it's gone. Um, Although we find out what's actually happened is it's traveled dimensions and is like on the other side of the sun from the Earth. Yeah, because Cassiope- Cassiopeia is upside down, even though that's not how constellations work. But whatever. Whatever. Well, Ultimate I, I, universe. I, things we're different. not cinema sins. I'm not going to nitpick like shit. Well, I mean, we're not cinema sins because if we do nitpick, we do it accurately. But also, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to go down that fucking hole. Um, oh god! Like this is movie. This is a fucking sci-fi. Like a loose. Like a soft sci-fi movie with some weird premises, I'm not gonna get hung up on stellar cartography. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's 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 yeah. Like so, 
he's drove to the hospital obviously in two minds he doesn't know how to yeah. feel because he, he might have just lost Ava and he probably is conflicted because he's like he's the one who encouraged her to go and do it because it sounds like she was he didn't, he didn't she, she was in go. this field of work yeah. stopped briefly as she became a mum went back into it then killed her children yeah. by accident and took a massive fucking step back and possibly moved to the States because of it even yeah. Because it's implied that they're from the UK. Because it's all great. We're going to no, make both, they're both. They both sound British. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, but, but um, so there's little hints in the movie that they've travelled from the UK yeah. recently to America, um, I, um, it, it exacerbated even more so with Jensen because in the alternate universe they grew up together. Yeah. And they studied together, and she's English, and it's this implication that well, you know, she's sort of English. Elizabeth is, Dibicki, otherworldly. Elizabeth the is almost Im- uh, impossible to place mm. because she was born to. Uh, French and Polish parents, uh, and was raised in Australia. <laughs> so, but but her, accent, her accent in this felt like she was aiming for. She's, for a, bit, she's a bit Australian, I think. Just yeah. just to make sure there was that connection between yeah. the two of them. Um, but anyway, to like they travel. Uh, he's he sees like screwed up buildings, like knocked down buildings, and he hears someone calling for help. Mm. So he gets out. And he finds a young girl in there, and he manages to contact the government and basically like, look, we know where her parents are. Can she was living? She was here with her aunt and uncle, or oh, what yeah. have you. And it's like, please, please get hold of her parents and let her know that she's safe. Um, and that happens. And that's obviously that's meant that's meant to be obviously developing the idea of like how he's coping with yeah. the fact that they lost their children. Do you know what I mean? And he, he he's the one who's willing to start a family again. But it's so it's given so little time. Yeah. The moment. But then, and, when, and you feel so bad for the actor because he's trying so hard with the very little he's yeah. been given. But when he sees the when, smoke when, and when rubble, find, yeah. yeah. And when he finds the the girl and then he sees in the, <laughs> in, the, in, the in the smoke and in the clouds the sh- the shape move. A very familiar shape yeah. to people who've seen the previous movies because you sort of see the big arm kind yeah. of lurch, and it's like, wait. Is this just a nod to the Cloverfield monster? Like, you know, we we we, we get the idea that this thing's shook up dimensions and freaked things out. Mm. But this movie takes place ten years after when Cloverfield was set. So it can't be the Cloverfield monster specifically. Yeah, because if, it, if, this, t- if this took place in the... the I mean, the Cloverfield, the Cloverfield, Cloverfield monster is killed. It, that's the implication. The start of that movie is the text coming up on screen talking about how... Because the, Cloverfield, the title in the movie comes from um, what they now refer to Central Park as because that's where they dropped like the fucking nukes yeah. to take out this creature when it was there at the finale of the movie. And like well, once it was radiation levels were safe enough for them to go back in and investigate, they found that all that had grown there in the rubble, like clovers had started to grow up through the through the, the dirt. Is that where it comes from? Yeah, that's where it comes from. That in 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 the original film, that's that's the idea of that's Cloverfield. Um since they've also suggested that the experiments with the marine biology stuff that maybe relate to the satellite crash was also called Cloverfield. But like that was the idea in the original movie. It yeah. was like a field of clovers that grew where the site was. And the whole point of the original movie is that it is the camera that has been recovered from the rubble. Yeah, they yeah. found it, and it's just a replay of that tape because that's why a few times in that movie it cuts back to them like months before the events of that night. Yeah, because it's just the tape that's been used. Even that, I don't think that's how SD cards work. They, 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 they kind of. <laughs> oh, I, think they, I, think they, I think they. I think they. I think they. I think they do make a thing of saying that it's oh, that, tape. That, oh yeah, because because the the, the, um, the original movie is the same length as an extended play DV tape. Yeah, it's eighty minutes. Yeah, so. So it, it's, that's quite smart, and that and that because that explains at the end as well. Like as the monster basically loom, looms down to fucking kill them, the tape cuts to like the date on the Ferris wheel at Coney Island, like a couple months before the events of the movie, mm-hmm. where they like make the thing of they're going to leave, like move town for the job and everything that the party that the movie is set on the night of is all about. And God, that first film's great. It works really well. Um, it works really fucking well. Doesn't frustrate me whatsoever. Um, this but, one, on the other hand, so we have we have the satellite part of the Cloverfield, the satellite station, yeah, crash in the alternate dimension, and we see it on the news, and it's 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 meant to make fucking saddos like myself who studied it in the first film think back to that. It's yeah. meant to make us go, oh, a satellite called Cloverfield I in was, the I ocean. Was, but, I was wondering if they were going to go into the, the the satellite crash. But it 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 seems like that actually is just debris from 
their that dimension's version of the Cloverfield yeah, yeah, station. Yeah. Um, the movie ends with Ava and Schmidt falling in uh, the, uh, the pod, another section of the satellite, and no, the pod. This pod, isn't it? Falling to Earth in it's the escape pod. The escape yeah. pod that looks more like a traditional satellite. Uh, in terms of its shape. Well, it's a sort of conical yeah, yeah. re-entry vehicle yeah. shape that we've all become familiar with. We see that plummeting, and it. I keep thinking, they're going to do it again. Like They're going to imply that this is the, the Cloverfield universe. Yeah. But again, it's ten years later, so it can't be. And then they ham... They ham... Ham. They ram home... It is kind of hammy. It is hammy. They ram home a little beat to make you think, oh, first movie, even though it can't be... Yeah, the I monster don't, I don't bursts. Think, yeah. We get we get a we get a Blumhouse finish. The monster bursts through the clouds, in in a sort of not jump scare, but in a like, hey, hey, see you later, folks. Talk about that on your way home, yeah. even though you're already at home because this is on Netflix now and not in theaters. Um, the giant monster. But it makes no sense because the monster in Cloverfield is about. The size of a small skyscraper. I'll, it's not it, cloud height. It doesn't make sense if you. Although there's implications in the first movie that that's a baby. If if it doesn't make sense if you attempt if you if you're thinking that it <laughs> is the same monster, but I don't think they ever imply that it is the same monster. No, same species. But if you've just watched the movies and not read into stuff, oh, yeah, you would yeah. assume that they're trying to tie them directly together. But I just I just figured that that was a kind of monster, like a species of monster that is going to become common in this anthology series. Hmm. Um, a monster that was nicknamed by the production team Clover. Yeah. Um, and then they finally released a toy of it like seven years after the first movie because they were like, I think enough people know what it looks like now. Fuck yeah. it, there's a toy. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. It's a very cool design. But it's not as tall as the clouds in the first movie. So when you see it at the end of this one, regardless of whether you think it's the first movie connection or not, you just go, wait, what? How big is that? And it's also the fact that we don't see Michael and the kid discuss or learn about the situation that's happening outside. Although he clearly knows about it. Because he knows something's happening. He's begging... I think he knows what's happening because he's begging Mission you know, Control not yeah. to let them come back. Yeah. Do you know what was needed Do you know what was needed in that scene? A couple more scenes. Well, not even just that. If that was the only scene that we're going to work with, the last time yeah. we see of him is, is getting in touch with the parents and leaving a voice message for Ava and then him at the end. The kid needs to have, like, longer hair or whatever, and they've made a home out of that shelter, and he needs to have, like, a fucking beard or yeah. whatever. There needed to be an implication of, oh, some time has passed since we last saw him it's ten like minutes ago. like two days or something. Yeah, so it, so it, why would he know that there's a monster above the surface? And Well, he's clearly been filled in on it, but then we don't see that. We don't that. see that, and so it's, it's, left to, it's left to implication, which is a little unsatisfying. So that's so what I mean. That all that stuff with Michael on Earth just feels really neglected. Yeah. In 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 the structure of the film as a whole, it's just it's. I it's think a I think it's a frustrating yeah, mess. It's it's not a a very good film. It's just this, a pretty good film. I don't think it's even pretty good. Okay. I, I, th- I, think, it's, I think it's all right. I think it's it, I think, all right. I think, if you, best. I think if you turn it off the moment the escape pod sets off at the end, you'll save yourself a bit of a headache. See, I don't mind because I I think that's a really the the, the implications of a of a monster that yeah. gigantic mm. that it can break the cloud barrier like that. Yeah, is and also what that means for for Ava and Schmidt. Yeah, like is, is that thing just going to eat them? Did it eat them? They dropped to the clouds and ate them. And then came up for a did they land on anything safe when they dropped through the clouds? Yeah. Like, or did they just fucking crash into a mountain and die? Who knows? Did they land on its uh, back? Based on where it is, they probably landed on its back. Yeah, probably. And died instantly. Uh, in its footprints. Um, God. They landed on TJ Miller with a camcorder. He's like, oh, I actually survived, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, yeah, but now you... you but I'm being Miller edited, out the, ta- edited out of the trailer. You've salted that earth, TJ, so... But don't worry, yeah. I'll get eaten in the film, and then that way everyone will be like, oh, he did it so we could all have some catharsis. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, it's This is a frustrating movie, because it's full of some ideas that I really dig. Yeah. And some cool sequences, but it never quite comes together. It's a bit of a mess. It's just a bit of a mess. I'd, I'd love for that arm to have given us some explanation in some way that would have hinted at something bigger. I love the arm. I love the arm. It's just such a weird idea. But it's, again, it's, it's, like, it's, when she's, it's when she's hiding from uh, Jensen in, in the last scene, like the gun confrontation, and it's just still, it's in a tank now, it's not under the 
the, the thing on the table, yeah. like it's in a tank, and it's just drumming its fingers like yeah. it's bored. And it's like, hang on, how is it alive and sentient if if um, Mundy's dead? Like, it's... if we'd been given some explanation, yeah. I'd buy it. But also, don't show it as doing something funny in the middle of what's meant to be a tense moment. Yeah. Unless you're then going to use the arm. For. I saw a tweet where someone said, don't introduce a severed arm at the end of Act 2 and then not use it in Act 3. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, doesn't quite work, but yeah. I, get, I get the joke you're making. Um, it's, it's breaking the rule of Volkov's gun. Hey! hey! Um, which had an unlimited amount of bullets, even though we saw it had about six. Oh, I think it had, no, it had a double stacked clip, so it has about 12. Oh, fair enough. Um, I think. I thought they were going to uh, Alien Resurrection Jensen at one point. They did, and they sort of made some sounds that implied yeah. it was happening, but they didn't show yeah. it. Also, freaking um, MCU villain um, fist fight at one point as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why not? That was quite fun. Hey, bit of a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a uh, MCU um, reunion. Although they've never been in a thing together, but hey, now they have. Screw it. Um, He's in space now. Talking about a mess. <laughs> Let's go to the emails. Emails. Um, oh, spoiler cooldown period. Everyone died. <laughs> hey. Ah. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Oh, Matt's broken. Um, <laughs> oh, he's actually broken. I'm just looking at this email from Luke, and it's so long, and covers so many different topics. So I'm just gonna. I, I apologise, Luke. I'm just gonna summarise. We're gonna short. You've heard of cool hand, Luke. We're gonna short hand, Luke. Yeah. Um, Netflix. A few little stupid gesture. Gesture on on fr- uh, on Netflix. Movie about Chevy Chase with Joel McHale playing Chevy Chase. What? Um, yeah, and it's like about how National Lampoon was originally created. Uh, huh? Yeah, it popped up. I saw it pop up on Netflix, but it's a, he, he recommends it and thinks it's great, and he's been waiting for it for years. But as as we know from Luke's previous emails, he is a big old uh, Chevy Chase and National Lampoon fan. So good, glad you liked it. I might check it out. Um, it's nice to know that those two maintained a, a healthy relationship. Apparently, then uh, after Community, yeah. <laughs> uh, um. Uh, so, digga, 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 digga. let the right one in. Have we seen it? Uh, is that the American remake? Let the right one in is the original. I've seen the original at some point. We're talking like two thousand eight. Yeah. I've got Let Me In, and I've not watched which is it. The American remake. Yeah, which is it's on. It's on. So here is also pretty good. That like, shelf somewhere, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I enjoyed Let the Right One In from what I recall. Um, I was I was in my film studies phase, so I was just devouring like you know. Um, what's it, foreign cinema and, and horror stuff, so it was the perfect yeah. time for me to watch that. Yeah. It's pretty good. Okay, it's pretty good. I've not seen it, so I have no thoughts. I it. do want to watch the American one just because it's like Chloe Grace Moretz's like first performance or second performance. She's quite early on in her career, yeah. It was it was either it was either pre just just before or just after Kick Ass. Oh wow. I think it was pre. Yeah. I'm not sure. Anyway, I, know, I think the characters you um, were in the original and they, they age her up slightly in the American one, so she's meant to be like 12 in the American one. No, Luke, I haven't seen the producers yet, and it's way down the list. Wait, so producers? don't hold your breath. What, the... the way Either you, the of way them. You, Really? Oh, fuck. I think we must have asked about it before. I don't remember. If you say, I don't remember no, no, what no, no, you no, emailed no, no. last week, so... No, no, no. If you say it's way down the list, I am forcing the original to the top of your list. Probably, so. probably the original. I don't the original's know. amazing. I haven't seen either of them. Hot diggity, it's amazing. Um. <laughs> okay... Uh, it's not okay, Matt. Nothing will ever be okay again. This this is Luke's list of top ten films, and we he, he wants us to give a mark out of ten or a pass if we haven't seen it. Okay, fair dues. Uh, um, so we'll go from ten downwards. Ten, ten to one. Uh, ten. The Shining. Seen. Seen it. Really it. enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Nine out of ten. Uh, Snakes on a plane. Really enjoy it. Uh, I'm surprised it's in the top ten, but I'm glad you enjoy it that much. I. I like how bollocks and tongue in cheek the whole thing is. I ha- I haven't seen it all the way through, so I, pass. Uh, I recommend. I think I bits recommend of watching it. it if you like schlock. Um, the producers sixty eight. Yeah, freaking so love it. I've not, not seen it. it. Uh, I know what you did Ma- last summer. Class and I've not uh, seen it. I've not. S- you know, I've never seen. I know what you did, what you did last summer. I, it's like sort of scream was until I finally did sit down and watch it. Oh. It's one of those films that I think we all feel like we've seen through cultural osmosis because it has been. And scary parodied movie. and referenced yeah. so much. Um, I'll have to give it a watch. I think. 
I think I'll have to give it a watch. Heather's not seen it. We've talked about that one before. Uh, yeah. Did, um, did, did, is that, did that originate from a musical or get turned into a musical? Turned into a musical. Turned into a musical and now it's coming back as a TV show that misses the point of both, oh, apparently. Yeah. Fine. Uh, a few <laughs> Challenge Stupid Gesture. It's just come out! We've just talked about it! We haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> uh, Keeping Mum, at number four. I really like Keeping Mum. It's very it. dark. It's very dark. It's it's Maggie Smith in a story about... Um, she She's... A, She's not a serial killer, but she murders people. It's a black comedy. And it's got Rowan Atkinson and Patrick Swayze in it. And that, if that's as mad as it sounds, it is. And it's great. And if you want to borrow it, please do. Hey! Um, that's to Matt, not to the listeners. <laughs> I've only got one copy. All sorts of stuff. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Eternal Sunshine in a Spotless Mind, number three. I like it. I'll give it about 7 out of 10. It's got issues, but it's mostly pretty good. What I remember of it, I really like. It's got, I think it's got That's issues not a joke. with the whole... <laughs> I think it, I think it plays a bit too much into the whole Manic Pixie Dream Girl trope that's kind of died a death now. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. 2, Lethal Weapon. It's great. Really enjoy it. Although uh, the second one's slightly better for my 9 opinion. out of 10, but fuck Mel Gibson. Um, <laughs> that guy's a racist asshole. Yeah. Uh, uh, and number one, National Lampoon's Vacation. I've never seen it. I enjoy it. I've never seen it. Uh, um, I enjoy it quite a bit. It's fun. Uh, we'll do one more quick one. Um, we'll. There's one for there's one from Lewis, who's a new listener, which will which is quite chunky. So we'll get into that another time. And there's one from Dan from Dan Rawlings, Dan Rawlings, Dan Rawlings, uh, and Ray Dan Rawlings, which which will, should dovetail quite nicely into our topic next week. Oh, we'll, next week we'll be talking about Black Panther, and this is somewhat relevant to Black Panther. Um, what? Oh, I thought you said there was another one, another short one. Oh, there is. Oh, uh, okay. But I was I, getting really confused. You, you were looking at me really <laughs> weirdly. Um, <laughs> but this one comes in from Tom Monte. Um, Wait, Tom Monte. Tom Monte. Quick one. We're going to fire through these. Get ready to reluctantly answer some Doctor Who questions as oh, two lifelong Doctor Who fans. It's been a while. Um, we, say than, that we say this facing a wall of Doctor Who things. Other than so other than series out. one in Chris's case, what is your favourite series hmm. of New Who? And why? Series 4, Donna. That <laughs> sort of sums it up, Series 4, yeah, Donna. Yeah, Series um, 4, Donna. Although closely followed by Series 5, because I do like the fairy tale experiment of I that year. I also like Series 2 quite a lot. Mm, series 2 is a lot of fun. And Series 3, again, structurally freaking great. And apart from 42, there isn't really... Not as keen on Series 3, series because I'm not as keen on Donna. But I'd really like Series 4 and Series 2. You mean Martha? Martha, so yeah. fucking hell. No, I really like Donna because I like Series 4. <laughs> fucking hell. Right, yeah, no, Series 4 is probably my favourite. Um, in terms of Series 11, how do you feel about another TARDIS team instead of the sole companion? In my eyes, the last time we had just one person travelling with the Doctor for the main bulk of a series was Donna, and I miss it. Clara doesn't count because she's Clara. I think what Tom's trying to say is that Clara is everyone and everything you need her to be. Um, what dynamic do you think works better slash are you more in favour of? Um, I... I'm interested in a TARDIS crew. Yeah, I I like the grounding of, of having connection back on Earth. I'm interested in Bradley I... Walsh as an older male companion. Mm. But I want them to travel. Like I want it yeah. to be more like series one, two, three, four, where like we might come back to the family once, maybe twice a series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I want them to be. I don't want it to be the Doctor picks up the companion to go on an adventure anymore. I want them to be on that freaking TARDIS yeah. having adventures. Because even Bill, who yeah. was pretty lovely, yeah, yeah. even Bill was a. Where are we going today, Professor? Well, we're going there today, and it's just like, yeah, no, like go on adventures. Yeah, st- don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't root them. And I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not. Don't I'm not, put. Don't put your toys back in the box at the end yeah. of every episode. Yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not worried about how big the crew is. I just want them to be traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if it so means yeah. that, if it means that one, two or three or four of the, of the family in yeah. the new series are traveling in different episodes. Great. But like, don't keep, don't yo-yo. Yeah. Travel. You don't, you don't go home at the end of every episode of Doctor Who. No, they don't need to because they yeah. can go on five or six adventures and be home five minutes after they left. And also, they live on the TARDIS that has bedrooms. <laughs> Shut up. Um, <laughs> lastly, not a Doctor Who question. What's your opinion on your reaction videos? Do you enjoy watching them? Or do you think it's an abused method of video making on YouTube? My kindest regards. Um, I, I I think commentary mm. and and discussion about things has its place. Has its place, but I think reaction videos are YouTube cancer. 
because of what they are overall. They they seem to just be thing in corner of screen. We stare yeah. at it and I think, occasionally I think, comment. I would rather I someone sit down there's... and say, hey, here's a video about this thing I've watched. Yeah. I've watched it a few times and I have some thoughts rather than just watch them going, oh, oh, yeah. Because yeah, I'm like, why? Someone, <laughs> someone having an instant in-moment reaction to something can be entertaining, mm. but too much of it is, like you say, picture in picture, small version of what they're watching, person's face, oh, oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, no. Ah, I'm scared. Oh, scary. Ooh, ah. Scared me. I would rather watch someone's live reaction to something if it was like, "Oh my god, my like partner has f- has started to get into hmm. X show that hmm. I really love," and we're tonight we watched that episode, so I secretly filmed their reaction to that moment because th- at least then you can go, "Oh, that you have a moment of like that's how I felt. That's really sweet." I think- or oh, oh my god, they have no idea how much they're in for and, and that kind of stuff thing. Needs to be but- like I really like what Red Letter Media do with their best of the worst stuff where you occasionally cut to stuff of them watching the thing and yeah. you get to see their in-moment reactions but the bulk of the video was them talking about it after the fact yes. with footage spliced in yeah. and I think what is what the, the kind of reaction in inverted commas videos that I, I are worthy mm. if, if there is such a thing but that are worthy of your time are the kind of videos where it is you know a discussion yeah. and a deconstruction of of, of something that the 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 video maker has has watched and it intersperses their discussion and commentary with clips mm-hmm. for illustrative effect. Yeah. Um rather than just them watching it and going, Oh, that was scary. Oh, that's weird. Oh isn't that person strange? Mm. Like, share, subscribe. And it's it seems so and it, dumb. And, and <laughs> No part I think part of wanting to be more thoughtful and uh, structured with it is kind of why we haven't done as much video stuff recently. But yeah, we've got some ideas, so we'll, we'll hopefully we'll be getting some stuff. Stuff to brew in. Um, slight side note: I don't hate commentary channels as much. These are the people who sort of like react to the YouTube community specifically. Yeah, um, people like H H three H three fun brilliant ways. H bomber H bomber guy's great because he sort of does big video essays yeah. about certain things. H three H three has a wonderfully odd reaction. Uh, channels like Leon Lush I enjoy because again he, he's he strives to be entertaining. I've come across Sean recently. He's yeah, very oh, yeah. similar to um, H uh, bomber guy in, in some respects. Mm. Um, um, but then there are those that just churn the video out quickly and they're just yeah. I fancy editing a bark at the screen like Wild Spartans and people like that where it's like this is you're not you're not giving me anything new yeah, this is just um, nonsense people who take a bit more time that like Leon Lush are a bit are entertaining he's quite yeah. fun again it's more about personality the idea yeah. is you're watching someone talk about the YouTube community through the prism of don't worry I also think this is bullshit here's why yeah that but again it's, it's that sort of measured um, mm. thought out often scripted Yes. commentary yeah. on something interspersed with clips for illustrative effort and it's that kind of stuff that uh, H3H3 uh, mm. Ethan and Hila Klein got taken to court yeah. for for, for as, a, as part of a copyright claim because they did that with someone's videos and the Matt guy Hoss, used videos yeah, and he, yeah, he, he was, was taken to court they was like won. they're using my content yeah. to make money that's copyright infringement they're like no we're we're talking well, about they your won stuff. that case because and that video was we structured redressed like that. it yeah. and we, yeah. we redressed it. We're using it for illustrative purposes because of the commentary that we're making on it. It, yeah. it is a critical discourse, mm. and so we have to use that content at, for illustrative purposes. And I, that kind of reaction video, yeah, I, I, I think I think I think they've yeah. been calling that genre the commentary. Yeah, I think that's more, videos more to commentary. try and distance it from what reaction has become the, the meaningful because like, I enjoy watching Angry Joe reviews Angry Joe shows reviews of games the full ones I can't sit through any of his movie reviews because aside from other Joe his other panellists are always really dull or fucking some yeah. just it's just like I you're not offering anything what is going on this is weird to watch and Joe sometimes gets very loud and, and passionate about it in a way that's a bit obnoxious um, whereas his reviews are great because again they are scripted, they are structured. Yeah. He's he's he doesn't review a game the moment it comes out. It's like a month later because he's taken the time to play it to its utmost, really think about it, dive, you know, dive in fully, write some little skits around it, which sometimes are very funny, sometimes they're just <laughs> fine, but sometimes they're very funny. You know, like they take time to make it work. Um, 
but like I can't watch his trailer reactions because yes, it's not just him watching a trailer. There is like ten minutes after where him and other Joe or whoever he's with sit down and talk about what they've just watched and discuss it. Again, I would rather them have watched it, watched a couple of times, talked and discussed it, yeah. and then turned the camera on and talked about it. Um, so React channels can go fuck a duck. Yeah, commentary channels on the other hand. All right. Fair enough. Love a bit of it. Just, Video just... essayists. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan. H-bomber guy. Absolutely. Uh, Lindsay Ellis. Oh my God. What was the recent one? Um, Bright. The Bright one. And and the Sorry Stephanie Meyer. Yeah. They were really good. She's real good. They were really freaking good. I, I revisited some of the Disney ones because she's obviously a big Disney fan and, um, likes, to, and likes to talk about what doesn't work and I'm, because it's, she's passionate about it. I'm looking forward to when the whole play comes back because it's going yes. to so. That's so good. I do love the whole play. The whole play. Whole plate, whole plate. Um, <laughs> right, I think that's us done, cocker. Yeah. Um, stick a fork in us. We are done. We are so done. We are done, Cheadle. Yeah. By the time you listen to this, I'll have live streamed and possibly finished the Devil May Cry 3 on Adventures in Backlogging. Um, we'll be back next week to talk about Black Panther. Yeah, boy. Um, and yeah, as always, keep an eye on Twitter at Big Damn Cast. Get in touch with us, Big Damn Contact at gmail.com. You'll notice we're building up a bit of a backlog of emails. It's just because we're being a bit more, rather than just reading everything verbatim, we're just trying out some different things and sort of, uh, picking here and there and, and being a bit more selective with what we do. We're it's, shaking it up, baby. It's, it's not a comment on the quality of your emails. We're just trying something different. Um, we're uh, twisting and shouting. Yes. I can't uh, remember the lyrics to that song. Work it on. on twist and shout. This is sort of about. Oh, no. oh god! I really hope we don't end on a damp squib. Oh no, a damp squid! Mm, Should have no, dried wait. it when you took it out. No, that's not what I. Oh no! It's an octopus. A wet octopus. Oh. <laughs> Moist octopus. Oh. Just. Play the theme. Play uh, just the play theme. the theme. We've done it. We've done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done.